Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, Arvanauts. Welcome, everyone, to day 12 of Adventures in Middle-Earth, Erebor Adventures, The Silver Needle. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you folks are uh, having a decent December, as decent as can be possible in the time in the time of the plague, in the time of uh, COVID. Although, uh, I do note that some vaccines started to go out in the United States yesterday, and uh, so there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We are moving, hopefully, in a much better direction, but um, still a lot of, you know, difficulty to go through as of yet and so everyone hang in there and we will try to do our best to be part of that process of helping you hang in there as we continue with Erebor Adventures which is our first and only session this month um, in December so enjoy it uh, because this is the only one you're going to get so I hope everyone is excited and looking forward to Middle Earth as I am. Before I go any further just a couple of reminders about way to support us here on the stream if you haven't done so already please follow the channel please check out our YouTube with exclamation point RFTube and please subscribe over there as well I'm trying to get up to a thousand subscribers um, over there. It's free to do it for you, but it definitely makes a difference for me. So please consider doing that if you haven't done so already. Uh, Excavation Point Arvcord is the Discord channel where you can hang out with the Arvanauts in between streams. Um, the website for all of that is uh, oh, actually Excavation Point Arv Tweets. I should mention that first. That's Twitter, um, where I will always announce when I'm going live or if there are changes in schedule or things like that. Uh, and of course, arvaneleron.com is the website for all of that. On the financial side, if you haven't already done so, please consider checking out our shop, exclamation point Arv Shop, which is our merchandise area, which has Adventures in Middle Earth material and has um, also Infinity and Beyond material. And soon we'll have uh, Curse of Strahd, uh, sorry, uh, I shouldn't say that, Esper Genesis material uh, we'll have up there soon as well. Um, if you have not already done so, please consider supporting us on the Patreon, exclamation point Arvtreon, that's sitting at 22 patrons, 240 a month. That really, as I've said many times, is the financial backbone of the channel, and it really does help us. So if you haven't already done so, please consider jumping on board with all of that. Um, and uh, last but certainly not least on the financial side, uh, the sub button right there, um, which I notice was already used by Sticker Glue, I believe. So thank you again, Sticker Glue, for the resub. And everyone who's able to do so uh, and hasn't already done so, if you would be so kind, it would be lovely to see you subscribe to the channel. You can get those custom sub badges and emotes and all that kind of good stuff. So all that would be very much appreciated as well. Lastly, of course, we have the publishing stuff, exclamation point Icarus. For details about my Icarus graphic novel, reviews and blurbs and things like that are continuing to come in. We're very excited, but we want that word to continue to get spread because that's how we'll be able to make books two and three and, you know, and so forth forth. So please consider uh, supporting us by picking that up and by spreading the word by leaving a positive review. If you've already done so, that would be very much appreciated um, at that link that uh, Triffid was kind enough to post right there. Then exclamation point library is Tales and Tomes from the Forbidden Library. Um, that is also hugely important um, and we would really appreciate any support that people can give us for that. The print editions of that are on the boat on the way. Um, they So that's awesome. They're already printed. They've already been shipped. So it's just a matter of actually getting here now and I can't can't wait for that to actually happen. That would be awesome. Um, I hope you hear sound. Everyone else can hear sound, yes? I hope everyone can hear sound. I hear? Okay, good. I was like, wait, what? Um, so, yeah. Um, so we've got that going on. And then last but certainly not least, exclamation point Grayshade KS. I'm going to be talking much more about Grayshade, uh, the Kickstarter for this, over the next few weeks. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that. A couple, I'm going to talk about a little bit over the next couple of weeks. But then starting in January, I'll talk about it quite a bit because we're launching in early February. So that is the plan. I am very excited for it. And I cannot wait to talk more about that as time goes on. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, of course, uh, exclamation point BLM, Black Lives Matter, um, which uh, is is, again, something important to affirm and assert the importance and significance of protecting black lives, please go there for uh, information and resources about ways that you can become an advocate, an ally, about ways that you can find uh, educational resources, information about political advocacy, and the like. All of that is appreciated. And last but certainly not least, exclamation point help now. Um, this is the link to the WHO page on suicide prevention, especially during a very, what is often a difficult period for people, the holidays, and especially now in 2020 extremely important that we reach out to those if we need help and reach out to people who may need help um, as the members of the community that all of you lovely people are. Schedule-wise, we got a lot going on today. It is a busy day. I am back at the normal environment, as you might be able to tell from my much superior mic quality here. Uh, I'm going to be streaming from here, and then on Friday and Saturday, I will be back over um, at uh, the, the home away from home as we're continuing our move process. Um, and so, but I'm currently back home at the normal 
normal place. Uh, and so uh, today we have got Adventures of Middle Earth going on. That'll be happening till about 3, 3.15 or so. Then we're going to be doing um, the um, we're going to be doing the nominations for the Chat Chosen Game of the Month, which is going to be happening in two weeks. So we're going to be doing that this afternoon. Uh, then today at 4 p.m. we have more of uh, Va Vaporum. I'm doing it wrong again. Uh, Vaporum. I need to remember that because I was talking to the lead dev of Fatbot Games yesterday, actually. Uh, Vaporum Lockdown. I'll be doing that again on the uh, channel over on GOG on Pen and Pixels. That'll be from 4 to 7 p.m. And then tonight, 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 it's happening, folks. At 8 p.m. this evening, we have the incredibly awesome and exciting uh, yearly tradition of the Our Vocalist with a Christmas Carol. You will be joined by Trendane Sparks, who will be making a guest appearance, a return to the Our Vocalist. Um, you will be hearing, of course, um, from from uh, Rob, you will be hearing from Little Red Dot and Zach Clay. Russ is n currently in Hawaii, so Russ will not be with us. But every other member of the R vocalist, including myself and even Little Arv, will be here um, as uh, we go through what I think is one of the best stories ever written, my favorite story, uh, and that is A Christmas Carol. And that is the case whether or not you celebrate Christmas, re regardless of religion or anything else. It's just a wonderfully told story. Um, and so I hope you will join us for that warm uh, holiday tradition, uh, and that'll be happening tonight night at 8 p.m. Eastern on this channel. Then tomorrow, I think we may be off because I believe Shadowed Mage is going to have to shift things around schedule-wise because of current streaming adjustments. So I believe that we don't have a community D&D tomorrow. Um, Thursday, we will be off. Friday, we'll be back. And I still have to decide if D&D with viewers is going to be Friday night or Saturday night. It's going to be one of those two nights. And the other night will be um, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And then uh, we'll be moving into the last week um, and a half or so of December and of 2020. So that's what we've got going on. But today we have got Adventures in Middle Earth. And so I'm going to unmute them so they know that we're ready to go. And I will apologize as always for interrupting them if I did so. Then I'm going to unmute them. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to head over to Reveal. The crew is here and you can see that um, some of them look like they're in their normal places. Some of them are currently not at their chairs. And one person is revealing the Christmas spirit from the side of a window with a tree, a lit tree in the background and a cat with wax on its paw. And um, that's <laughs> that's how we roll, basically, um, here. Um, but it is great to have the entire full crew with us. And I will start with the gentleman below me, as I always do, uh, Mr. Trendane Sparks, who is repping uh, Tawny Bear proudly uh, today. And uh, Trend, how are you? How's, how's life in the universe on the left coast? And um, who are you playing today? I'm doing fine, Mr. Amphibian Affection Interruptus. Um, That's what I interrupted? Was it? I see. Yes. Uh, actually, you have to throw the... You, have, you take the frog and throw it with, like, a lot of force against the wall. And then it turns into a prince. Like, there's no kissing and walls. So That's the last sentence I would... <laughs> it's a tough love. Like, basically, the frog keeps pissing you off. Uh -huh. And at some point, you just snap and oh. get violence. And you are rewarded with uh, a handsome husband who has a ton of oh. riches. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, dear kids, is why you should also do animal cruelty. <laughs> what, what a holiday message. Rich. That is a holiday message for the ages, I think we can say. Um, Yes, Triffid. Oh, sorry, just before you go on, Trent. Yes, I think the channel points thing is going to happen, but they didn't tell us when exactly just to be ready for it and that it was going to be rolled out. So I actually need all of you to keep checking and seeing because you're probably going to know before I will because I've already activated it and made it possible on my channel. So it's just when they go live, then we can use channel points to boost it. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, the channel points thing, which Twitch rolled out about six to eight months ago, which is just as you watch the channel, you get points in this channel points. Uh, people can use those for a couple of inspirations to the players, but also they have a new feature where people will be able to get boosted to more exposure with Twitch, like the front page or versions of the front page um, based on channel point usage. And so I think this is a great use of channel points, um, but I don't know when that's going to happen. I know that I was one of the channels selected to do it. It's a beta right now, but they have not yet actually like sent it live. So Hang in there, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, Trent, other than uh, interrupting you while you're talking about throwing frogs against a wall, how else I, are things, and, and uh, who are you playing? Today? I was not talking about throwing frogs. I said amphibian affection, not... Frog love. <laughs> well, I was trying to think of, a, of, a, of another word for throwing something that starts with an F. But... Um, um, fling. Fling. Hey, there you go. 
frog flinging. Yes, thank you. That'll work. <laughs> you want to need you need to know a word? Ask an author. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> or look it up in a dictionary, you know, just synonym.com. Hopefully sponsoring us soon. Anyway, so um yeah, I'm Trent Sparks. I'm a professional voice actor person who's doesn't really do any good to say that I'm waiting for my boss to get back to me with a list of pronunciations so I can start recording narration. But uh, you know, that's basically what I'm doing. Um, but Thanks, John I'm Helpers. Gonna, I mean, like, well, okay. I'll, 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 I'll call him out. He's really fucking busy, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. He's always <laughs> so, busy. So am I. I otherwise, know I'll get in about 18 pages and then have to stop because I don't know how to pronounce one name, and it's not like I can't skip over it and record it. You can't do that and record it later. And yeah, I knew that I was going yeah, to be exactly. the ticket. <laughs> like, exactly. It's like somebody photoshopping themselves yeah. into a whole black and white photo and like they're super crisp and clear and everything. Or just bleep it out. Clear. And therefore yeah, beep it a beep. Back masking whenever, you know, back in the 80s when there was a cuss word in a, in a song or something. Um, anyway, so. Hi. I felt like Rob doing that. Anyway, so. Um, uh, yeah, I'm uh, playing this guy whose name is Thegan Tony Bear. The Hearthmender, okay, dwarf friend, and I keep getting told it's not pronounced the way it's spelled. Dran, Thane, Tony Bear, it's it's Thane, um, is what it is. <laughs> um, very cool. Uh, always a pleasure to have Trend with us, and you will again hear and see and hear from Trend this evening. Um, after I get some sleep. After yeah. you, after exa exactly right. After he gets some sleep, which he must absolutely one hundred percent do. But it's always a pleasure to have Trend in with us, and it's also to have a pleasure, also a pleasure to have uh, the aforementioned author with us, uh, who is a source of all words, um, you know, and and that kind of thing. And, <laughs> I have uh, all the words and very good fantasy work, uh, and that of course is Brad Bollier. Brad, welcome. Um, and uh, yeah, how's how's life for you in the in the Midwestern uh, territories, as they call them, and um, and all that? And who are you playing today? Well, there's there's optimism given the uh, state of the vaccines. Yes, uh, but we're still looking at a uh, medium long road ahead. So, yeah, we're still uh, still hunkering down here in Wisconsin. Um, and uh, but I'm looking forward to getting back to to Bolo. We left on a cusp of. Uh, uh, a, a dangerous mission we're about to undertake. So looking forward to it. Yeah, and uh, that's true. There's going to be some discussion about how both these things are handled, as I believe Bolo and Inga are heading back to meet up with Tawny and the river um, before, uh, f before apparently finally trying to invade the bandit hideout. But we'll see how that all goes down. Um, but it's always a pleasure to have uh, Brad with us. And it's also a pleasure to have um, someone who apparently is going to be on the right side of the window for the entire session just to reveal cat and tree, <laughs> which is it's yes. funny because it looks like some kind of a like. I mean, it looks like, like this superimposed yeah, yeah yeah this painting image. setup like just like yeah yeah exactly like it's really about the cat yeah and you're just like commentating on, <laughs> Which on is, its life that's what ownership the cat ownership is like from what i understand so um but no, how are you doing terry how's how's life in the universe with you and uh your cat and your tree and all those sorts of things uh things are wonderful <laughs> <laughs> so uh as far as i can be anyway because starting this night we are going into full lockdown till uh for a few weeks which just great lovely mm. um so yeah uh if things go really sour then i will not be able to see a human soul for several weeks um mm -hmm. uh, um but yeah let's let's not dwell on that um instead let's get back to talking committing violences against frogs that claim to be monarchy uh <laughs> <laughs> again <laughs> that's really what it because... is is a strike against the monarchy that's really yes yes <laughs> yeah. it is a blow uh... against royalism yeah are, are there uh... frogs in dale greg uh... <laughs> well i imagine well, there's so. a lot of water so <laughs> they're there but in as the shadow deepens they're fell frogs that that are you know like <laughs> dire frogs let's move the camera up and the fell frogs were flogging against the <laughs> playing Indeed, for the frogs themselves had been touched by the shadow and crept rather than hopped from lily pad to li anyway. Mm, yes. um, so, um, but you were playing. They really croaked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you were, you were. Did you say who you're playing, uh, Terry? Did I miss that just now? Um, I, I don't play. Uh, I don't like games. It's, uh, it's for. That is a bald-faced <laughs> lie. 
<laughs> and a lie and a yeah. Uh, um, no, I uh, I'm playing Inge, daughter of Ida, Thane Inge, home finder, daughter of Ida, Council of Dine the Second. Um, and also, I want to explain what's up with these candles down here because that's special. Yes. And I know that not everybody does that for like Christmas season. Even though I'm not actually Christian, I still do that because childhood nice. stuff. Um, you know how like stuff from your childhood stays with you and you mm -hmm. do it anyway, even if you <clears throat> don't commit to the things behind it anyway. This is a so-called uh, Adventskranz or Advent uh, wreath? Wreath? Wreath. Wrath, no. Wrath. <laughs> Advent Wrath. Advent Wrath. Advent Wrath. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my new metal christmas album welcome yes. to advent wrath <laughs> that's actually a brilliant idea you're gonna have <laughs> joy and do that. joy and peace for christmas <laughs> no, 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 no. every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly um but peace yeah be uh, with you. <laughs> it's four candles and like before um holy night like the evening before the first christmas day uh every sunday um like the four Sundays before, like those are called first, second, and fourth Advent. And you light a candle on the wreath. For reasons. Probably some old pagan tradition, but which would be great. But like it's stuff like that where we just don't know how it started. So yeah. That's right. But I love. I and actually... while we are on the topic of candles, happy fifth day of Hanukkah, right? Fifth day. I think it's a fifth day. That's right. That's yes, right. Yes. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> and I and I should say that um, uh, I love the fact that so many holiday traditions involve so much with light um, because yes. I like light a lot. And uh, so anything that involves more lights is good, I think. Um, I mean, it's literally just people trying to battle seasonal depression throughout the seasons. Right. Which is and they come up with universal ways to... things. Exactly. <laughs> but it sounds so much better than the festival of averting seasonal depression. So it was, that was... <laughs> The, or FASDA, the, uh, as they called atheist. it back in the day. <laughs> that's the atheist version of Christmas. <laughs> no, they have what? Festivus and the airing of grievances? Like, that's mm, the, you know, yes. that's what that is. You light a candle for every grievance you air. Anyway. Oh, um, boy, that's going to be a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of candles. <laughs> so many grievances. Um, but uh, always a pleasure to have Terry with us. And I also uh, very much uh, high marks on the hat as well. The the blue Santa hat, I want to point out, um, which is a... Which is a slight departure from the tradition that i like i think it looks really or good or it's um, red and your color scheme is off Just or like it's blue been... the color of the democrats trying to save us um, from the republicans I mean, who no, knows it's like because i have so much green in the room you see uh it like uh cancels yeah. out the red in the room because they are uh complementary colors it so, affects uh, only your hat yes. it's like some weird yes, green screen only thing only that red. only affects. no i yeah. also have actually red eyes but like now they appear or time broadcasting sense. from the alternate universe in which one side of the time war won and the other one lost. That's a great segue. Oh. It's almost like that's coming from an award-winning series shortly to win every other award when it becomes a TV and movie and, you know, <laughs> musical hit, which I'm sure will happen. I actually, I, I do have to say, I thought about that the other day. I'm like, you know, I'm like, Time War, you know what hasn't been talked about yet? Putting that into a musical. Like, let me, <laughs> let me see. This is how you lose the Time War, the musical. Oh I, can, I can see Joss the... Whedon, get on that Yeah, shit. like, well, <laughs> Joss Whedon first needs to... Um, hmm, yeah, hmm. I know he's got a lot of time on his hands right now. That's but, exactly uh, right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But... Um, I missed it, something, but don't worry about it. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good segue into uh, speaking uh, to, of course, uh, the amazing Amal Amatar, who is currently um, nursing a cup of tea, a, a mug yeah. of tea. Is that what that is? A mug of tea. It says pie in the sky on it. It is a relic a, from one of my last <laughs> travels. And it's a blue pie In the before times. Mug. And it's a yeah. it is a blue pie mug. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Because right, as if you follow Amal on Twitter, you will know that Amal, uh, for whom we should all wish a happy b now belated birthday, um, too. But Amal Ooh. received a blueberry pie as part of this, and I think it was um, Terry. I think maybe in Discord said something effective. I'm not saying that I'm jealous, but I'm not not saying that, I'm which saying is how that. I feel <laughs> as someone who happens to love blueberries myself. So, how was the blueberry pie? Because I'm sure there's not much of it left. And how are you? And and uh, who are you playing? Amal? There is still half. The blueberry pie left uh which i'm very excited about having at some later point uh so i i was saying uh before we started broadcasting that uh i went from having like no treats in the apartment to having a box of gingerbread cookies and a uh have a, a blueberry pie and lots of fancy chocolates and many other lovely birthday spoilings 
Um, so it's been really, really nice. I am 36 now, which uh, is... Uh, I remember those days. Wow. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Those were the days, my friend, etc. cetera. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, it's, it, was a, it was against all expectations. My pandemic birthday was actually really lovely. So I am very grateful for that. Um, I was actually going to segue from like, you know, candle lighting and stuff to uh, birthday thingies because my birthday is on St. Lucia's Day, which is a, a sort of traditional candle um, light in the dark. Sort what of... we to go demonstrate? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> For instance. <laughs> no, I will get hot wax on my beautiful blue yeah. hat. <laughs> no, don't do that. it. Don't do it. So, uh, so no, it's, it's, been, it's been very nice. Um, of course, like I had... Uh, my 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 husband uh, forbade me from doing any work. Uh, on, so I, I've been I, I had a massive um, job application that was due on uh, Friday, which feels like a million years ago, but was in fact a few days ago. Mm -hmm. But um, sort of like my my whole universe had bent towards just getting this application in for a tenure track job at my university that I already teach at uh, and it is now in. And so I, I felt this tremendous release just in time for my birthday uh, and uh, did no work over the weekend, which means that as soon as this stream is done, <laughs> I will have a lot more work. You know how like with NaNoWriMo, uh, people are like, oh no, I missed a couple of days and well, it's the end of term and there's a lot of marking to do. So any marking that I don't do on any one day has to be made. Yeah, I know that feel. <laughs> I know that feel, though my semester ended a, a while ago, so or about a week and a half ago, so, um, but I know that. Mine feel. was just last week, yeah. just on Wednesday was my last day, and a bunch of students um, are, had a take-home exam that is coming in today. <laughs> so, or no, is that right? No, it was due yesterday. I keep thinking that the 14th was Tuesday, but no, in fact, today is the 15th. Um, so there's a, a fresh batch of exam papers to mark. Woohoo! <laughs> and then after that, everything will in fact be done. But but yeah, so uh, I play uh, the uh, a woodsman of Rosgabel called The River. Uh, and she has a faithful hound of Mirkwood named Stone. Uh, she is a fighty bard and, um, and, and very, has, has taken a very feels that this thing with Longo is real personal now <laughs> on account of having Kilda um, having been really nice and stuff. Yeah. Um... Stone. Sorry? Thane's 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 I don't, Thane's neither Thane's of them got knighted, I got, uh, you know, titled. Um, but if somebody wanted, oh no, I can't, I can never mind. I just, mm, dog with title is topical to uh, a friend of mine is, is is writing a historical romance and it's absolutely extremely charming but i probably shouldn't talk about it because she's in the midst of writing it but it just reminded me so anyway <laughs> that's cool all right well some people can just mark their calendars down for that also i, I was cracking up at a rudinell doing the let's fight the time war again like just like that's <laughs> that's definitely what we need it's just there a red actually, to the left and a blue there, to the there is literally a uh a, there is a tiny video clip of my editor uh nava wolf and i dancing to that song with those lyrics <laughs> oh really lyrics okay at Worldcon in dublin last year <laughs> at the dance party that uh john scalzi was djing and it was it, it was good it's good video i will find a link to it later maybe but yeah very yeah very cool uh i i, I appreciated it um but i am perhaps easily amused in these days um but it is uh good to see everybody here i am glad to have you all with me on this adventure and let us get started with our uh, talking about what happened in our last session which was a couple of weeks ago um in our last session and let me fire up the music now that i think about that uh where are we? we've got medieval town so let's fire up the medieval town where are you, medieval town? Show yourself. Oh, set the medieval town on fire. Uh, no, there we go. Stepping into medieval slum. Medieval town. That's right. That's actually, that's that's very true. Um, medieval town. And let us also fire up what I think is um, the bravest heart. Let's start actually from the top since they are going to be going into a, they are going to be going into a tavern. Lovely. There we go. Uh, in our last session, 
the um, party began to, as I said in my Twitter about this earlier today, in my tweet about this earlier today, uh, tighten the net on uh, the bandit known as Longo. Um, Longo has been a problem for the people of Dale for some time now, uh, as his name has begun to surface repeatedly in, um, in connection with a bunch of different crimes and different things that are happening around Dale that are causing problems. And the biggest issues as of late have been a um, spate of attacks upon certain people within the town, most notably Kelda, um, the uh, uh, weaver and well-beloved uh, seamstress, I should say, not weaver, more seamstress, um, who ended up dying as a consequence of an attack that was made upon her home. Um, the reason for this seems to be unclear, except that there is a thing that she kept talking about, this silver needle that she valued above all other things, um, which apparently went missing in this attack, and also the fact that part of what killed her although it was probably smoke inhalation and all that sort of stuff, but that she also had been gradually poisoned. And the reason that that's important is that that is the same poison, apparently, according to Tani's uh, best efforts to determine this, the same poison that was used on Queen Una, Bard's queen, who is currently gravely ill and um, is suffering the effects of this poison. What the party discovered is that the poison apparently was conveyed to its victims through the use of um, having this thread that was specially infused with it, so that people would lick the end of the thread to put it into a needle, and then over time this had an effect of actually killing, uh, you know, or poisoning the host. Um, and doing so without arising, arousing suspicion about, let's say, food for which you have tasters and all these other things that you might expect poison to come from. The party further discovered that there were other examples where these uh, skines, uh, these spools of thread, um, were found that were uh, sort of connected to this. The initial beginning of this adventure, where the party was blocked from going into Dale because of an accident that had happened in front of the uh, gates. Um, the wagon that fell over was filled with a bunch of these supplies for um, sewers and weavers and things like that, including um, some of the thread that weavers. was missing. Um, say again? Weavers? Uh-oh. Yeah, um, that too. Uh, yes, 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 indeed. Uh-oh. Yeah. Whoa. Um, so all of these um, that had this uh, that had this sort of problem were leading to this. And in our last session, uh, Bolo actually doing a little bit of reconnaissance work along with Inga down in the southern uh, quarter here of uh, Brokenstone, um, discovered that there was actually um, a couple of uh, abandoned sort of closed warehouses um, that had, for some reason, in these abandoned warehouses, um, found this uh, set of barrels uh, just sort of in the middle of this blocked off warehouse. Six barrels in a semicircle around a grate that was in the floor. And the grate that's in the floor um, leads to possibly, it seems, a ladder and a tunnel down heading into somewhere. Um, and in those barrels, more of these skeins of silver thread, perhaps this thread, which may be part, again, of the same poisoning uh, conspiracy, uh, same poisoning plan that the party has run into over and over again. And so, while the river and stone and Tawny Bear went up north um, to the battered mug in an effort to get uh, whoever might be trailing them off of uh, the trail of Inga and Bolo, heading up to the battered mug, um, Bolo and Inga uh, went and found this information that I just told you, and now is leaving the warehouse behind to go up, rejoin their friends, and then presumably go back and investigate and perhaps um, head into what is looking like a confrontation sometime this evening with the bandit uh, Longo. They have found what they think is his hideout. They want to figure out a way that they can get him without scaring him off or creating, you know, huge fights and problems and all that sort of thing. Um, but they are going to be trying to do that by this evening aided by the thief Brindle and her crew of the Broken Stone Irregulars, um, of which Bolo is apparently a um, honorary member, uh, so to speak, at the moment. So um, there are a lot of machinations going on. And so I'm going to begin, actually, um, with uh, Tawny and the River and Stone as they make their way up to the Battered Mug. Um, you had just crossed the bridge when we finished our last session um, and had just been making your way over uh, to the Battered Mug, getting over the bridge and hopefully losing, at least... Well, you weren't sure if you were losing the tail yet. You were trying to sort of occupy them by having this big argument about Bolo's cooking skills. He can't make honey um, cakes like I can. For example, <laughs> um, as they're no having this thing. Make so, honey cake like you can. so I guess my question is, my question is, why is my wife calling me? All right, hold on a second. I'll be right back to you. One, one moment. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, you're okay, doing I will, that. I will, I will heat up this tea. Which... Alright. Can't seem to keep things warm. Yeah, okay, then I also want a hot drink. Because all the talk about fine. blueberries reminded me of the fact that I do have a bottle of... Uh, blueberry... Uh, no. No, Glühwein. Um, oh, wine. Mm, much better. <laughs> Yeah. Blue vine is much better than Goldschlager. Much. What is it? Blue vine? Goldschlager? Oh, glue no, no, vine. It's, I it's know like Gold a mulled wine. It's a mulled wine. And, and say it again? Blue vine. Like glue wine. Oh, okay. Blue vine. But it's okay. not made from horses, I hope. <laughs> Yo. Otherwise, Lillemon's in trouble. Yeah. Run, Lillemon. Run. <laughs> right. <laughs> Be free. <laughs> Build and a pony, go back to the Shire. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine what it would have been like if they'd tried to take a, a pony across the bridge of Kazadum? It would just be horrible. Clop, you fools. Clop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I just rewatched the uh, uh, the trilogy, uh, the movies, and they. Uh, the first couple times I rewatched them, they held up pretty well, and they still do. Um, but like as as time goes on and the effects get better, even in makeup and stuff like that, especially CGI, yeah. it was like so advanced for the time. And now it just isn't, you know. You just need to pick up on things. That... You look at some of the points where like where they're they're climbing up to look over the hill, and yeah. Gollum comes up next to him, like God, what movie is he from? Because <laughs> it looks completely different from the thing. What yeah. do you want? Yeah. And... Even at the time, Gollum came across as not quite real, but you know, like you could sort of swallow it. And now it's glaringly <clears throat> different compared to, like, say, the Marvel movies, which is yeah. crazy good. Uh, the stuff that they do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my uh, my apologies. That was my wife calling to tell us that we got the offer on our home that we had wanted. Um, oh my gosh! So... Congratulations! Thank you. Very nice. So, oh, um, yeah, and it's and it's a really nice couple that is, um, it's a neurologist, actually works at a stroke clinic, and um, his wife and their kids go to a school local to this house, so they love the house, and they it'll be perfect for them. And we on our side, um, keep your fingers crossed, but we have these two places, one of which in particular, I don't want to even talk about it because I'm going to spoil it, but it's an incredible place that would be awesome so anyway i'm very excited about that so that's so she apologizes for interrupting but she said that she thought that was worth worth interrupting for, for sure so yeah oh. so also extremely extremely kind of her to get our dm in an especially good mood right before the start <laughs> yes <of the game. laughs> inspirations for I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you get an inspiration you get an inspiration yeah, yeah exactly rude no i don't want to open my mouth if i tell anyone my wish won't come true yeah i, I want to be careful <laughs> about it but this place would be amazing if we ended up getting it but so that's good and it sounds like it's a it's a really you know it's a good couple that a good family that'll be entering it and all that stuff so Are i mean my son it? was born here so like this this you know this house is is an important house it's just but the time it kind of move on sorry brad are, are you upsizing is... yeah um we we're, we're upsizing the very extremely minute or less short version is that we're upsizing a little bit mostly because my son is four and a half and extremely active and we really don't have a room for him yet you know my mother-in-law mm -hmm. lives with us i would have mm -hmm. to give up this office and even if i gave up the like I, there, i'd have to go somewhere like and there's no place to go oh, really what's again yeah. what closet the closet yes i as we've already seen i already have experience with that in my airbnb so um so we have to do that a little bit also i want to be out of the city frankly like i'd like a little less pollution and a little i'd like to not have sandwiches costing ten dollars a piece and things you know like everything here is expensive and um new york is the most expensive area in america to live so i'd like is, to cut down a little bit on that and is it more um expensive than, than like the bay area more expensive new york city is now the most expensive city to live huh. yeah even more than the bear. I think San Fran is, is second or third, but um, yeah, it's outrageous. And it's mostly because of like rental cost, mortgage, like a bunch of things. So, so yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it, it, it is what it is, but like um, I've only ever bought one house, which is this house. And so selling a house I've never done and buying a house on the other end of it again is, but this house that we're moving into is going to be until you know we retire some many years hence i suspect um this is going to be the house so this is where the kids will do their growing up the rest of the way and all that so have you actually already closed on it or no um okay. this we got the offer the the showings just started actually the showing started um this past uh was it friday 
So we started we showed we started on Friday and we got the offer that we wanted today. We had a feeling that the the real estate guy was like, you guys will get lots of offers because of the circumstances. So that's good. We got the offer that we wanted and um, and so that's that's you, good. I mean, it's a pain in the ass to move. It's a pain in the ass to do all this, but um, yeah. So do you know where you want to move to? Yeah, we actually um, have a couple of possibilities. We had a few places we're looking at. The place we're focusing on now is a community called uh, Black Rock, which is um, right near Fairfield in Connecticut. It's actually on, it's in Bridgeport technically, but it's like a few hundred feet away from Fairfield basically. Um, yeah, Bridgeport. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. Um, and so the Black Rock community is this beautiful, um, it, it's first of all, it's a community which is great as everybody knows i like communities but it's like the kids can run out and play with people like it's a throwback almost um to being able to do that and um so there's that it's it's kind of quirky in a way that we like um and it's convenient enough like it's right near 95 so i can get on there it, my commute will be longer but it won't be crazy um and uh so we the other thing is that it's near the water and my wife in particular has really really missed um, she grew up in Seattle, and she's really missed the water a lot. And being in a place where one of these places we're looking at, you just walk out, and it's like there a block is the ocean. Um, right. That's a big thing um, for her also. So, um, yeah, and uh, her therapy practice is doing very well, and I've managed to, you know, do fairly well on the academic side. And my writing is gradually building, gradually. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway. So I'm, I'm excited. I mean, if we get the, oh my God, I, I want to talk, I won't, I won't, I'm resisting, but I want to talk about the house so much because it's like, I'll just say that this one you place. You save that for next time, Brett. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. You're right. I don't do that. Now we'll give you a bonus to resistance. Yes, exactly. No, don't do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you better roll for it, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, no, no. Um, anyway, so thank you for all being indulgent of that. Um, so uh, I was just about to ask, um, as you folks were heading to the battered mug, um, did you have anything else you wanted to do in terms of the route? I think you were going just trying to loudly occupy attention as you were heading there. So that is still your plan, I believe. There's a slight divergence, if I remember correctly, from the end of the last thing, where um, since Tawny was facing back towards the bridge because he was looking back towards uh, the river and he said, no, I know where I'm going, cross the bridge and turn left. And so he turned to go the wrong way because he was now facing the other direction. Right. But he knows exactly what he's doing. He's just right. intentionally going the wrong way. And I believe the river called you back, right? And it was like, no, 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 this way. We were whatever. in the process of discussing that when you interrupted us. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So so on you go then. Uh, continue with your discussion slash movement to the battered mug. Yeah. Ladies first. So, so the this way then. That's and what the, the instruction said. They said cross the bridge and turn left. Wait, that is out of character. That is actually the correct oh, way. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, I'm just gonna keep looking at the the map and where we are and stuff. Um, uh, and and sorry because I'm I'm now also out of the flow of it. Uh, like. Is there a sense from Tawny that this is just misdirection or that he actually wants to go in that way to further misdirect the person? Yes. Sorry, I'm looking It's both. <laughs> it's both, both. really. Okay. Um, okay. It, 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 he, his intention is to either throw off the tail or make them think that he really doesn't know where he's going. Okay, cool. That's or it. he's so angry about, about Bolo you know, taking his spot in the in the group, that he's not thinking about where he's going. Just we're disaster heroes, obviously. Right. Like we're just a mess. Uh, like so. Anyway, so uh, River is going to uh, like affect patience and exasperation. <sighs> You're absolutely sure, because as I recall, the directions were continue straight on after you cross the bridge. And then turn left. So, and he turns around and points. So we turn left there. Or he points back over his shoulder. Yeah. So we turn left there. No, I think this this way. Just just follow me. Just let's just go this way. All right. And if I'm wrong, I'll buy you a pint. What? Your choice. Where? 
<laughs> the place we're going. <laughs> Ooh, that is not a good sell. Well, I haven't been there before. I mean, maybe it's an adventure, you know? You Have you tried ale from these environs before? I'll, I'm sure that there's probably Let's there's see. probably something uh, adventurous about which, it. Which of us nearly died from a poison in this town at a feast? Let's see. I think it was. Yes, you. It, yes, and as a consequence, I've developed a very hardy constitution and uh, perhaps a taste for danger. So. You notice, by the way, a couple of the passers-by sort of look at you curiously. I mean, they, they all know you anyway, but looking, you know, looking at you curiously as they walk by sort of at this discussion. <laughs> Don't embarrass us. Come on. Let's just, let's just go, Fine. right? And let's not talk down the local cuisine while we're about to head into it. Let us just... And he basically reaches out and, like, stops someone who's passing by. Excuse me. Uh, uh, sir or madam. Uh, <laughs> and you said, hi, hi? You ever been to the battered mug? Oh, uh, the, the battered mug? Well, uh, sure, sir. Uh, I, I have on several times. Uh, what What do you think of it? I, I try not to think about it at all, sir. <laughs> uh -huh. And he kind, of, he kind of pulls away and hurries along the street. <laughs> The scene from what's 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 the film where uh, I guess it was uh, Hercules, where uh, uh, Hades has got the blue flame. Yeah, there. yeah. Is that, is that the? One? I don't remember if that's the it one, is, but it's the one is. where he's like, mm. yes. <laughs> that is what Tani does. Mm, see, exactly. <laughs> I'm not talking down the local. <laughs> it's the standard for this place. All right, Whatever. all right, okay. I, I'll give you that. Oh, if I'm wrong about my cat coming in with an you enormous have a cat now too. Like, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> we're not making the cat into a pie. We're just uh, anyway. Um, yes. <laughs> if I'm wrong about where the battered mug is, I'll stand you a pint at the pub of your choice. Done. All right. Of course, I'm not going to lose because I know where it is. So here we go. <laughs> no, 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 our, our wager was not about where it is. Wait a minute. Yes, it is. Yes, it is! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my friend. Clearly, you do need a drink. Let's just let's just go. All right. So, uh, so you make your way in this kind of um, winding, somewhat serpentine, but eventually ending up, I think, at the Battered Mug, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. um, where you find what I, I guess would probably be charitably described as chaos. Um, there is smoke billowing out of the um, out of the front door. And at first there's sort of this panicked, you know, kind of reminder of a, you know, a fire at uh, the fire at Kelda's. Um, but then you can you can see that there are sort of people. Uh, there's some people outside kind of looking in, but you can also see vaguely through the smoke some figures kind of moving around and some some huge, enormous figure, almost as big as Tawny, um, seems to be a sort of shadowy kind of form through the smoke in the back, like waving something. Um, and you can hear from inside, Ah, oh, you big, no, you, 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 this, not, just bring me the water. No, I don't uh, bring. And so you hear all this kind of like confused sort of yammering back and forth. Um, and uh, then you hear this pssst, and the smoke increases even further. Um, and uh, finally, it begins to kind of slightly clear where you can see that the form that was doing this was actually a very large man with an incredibly dirty apron who is waving something frantically um, in an effort to apparently push the smoke towards an exit, I guess. Um, and so you can see them inside. You don't see anyone else inside the room except him. And um, behind him, someone who looks very similar to him, kind of bustling about, uh, also with an apron, and um, seems to be going back and forth to the kitchen with buckets, from what you can see, or at least a room in the back of the kind of, you know, seating area where uh, with buckets. And they're paying no attention to you at all, incidentally. Right. Can can we just get a quick recap of like I know I know we were going there as kind of misdirection, but also we were there to like we're supposed to be there to like loudly ask questions and stuff, right? Like I just want to yes. refresh my memory there. That's uh, right. Loudly, specifically ask questions about Longo, and 
Right, and I, and I believe that was part misdirection, and I, I sort of, I guess, confirming like, information you already might have had as well. I, I can't remember if we changed course because we discussed like five thousand possible. Approaches. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm trying to recall. <laughs> I, I vaguely remember it was like we, we wanted to make a commotion to make it seem like we were. Oh no! Didn't we say we were going to like say that we were heading out of town or something? Well. That was uh, one of the choices. That was one of the choices. One of the possibilities was to try to find people who were um, who were sort of watching out for Longo, right? Uh, and then and then tail them when they went to go tell him what was going on, right? Uh, so, so I, I didn't I don't know if we had kept that plan or if it was really just to get our tail off of us. I mean, I think I think we sort of did that, in as much as like you and Inga did tail someone who was tailing us, right? Right. So, bit, yep. and you and you tailed that person to like the secret stores, and you you found a secret entrance there well, to we, Longo. We broke, we broke away from the tail that was following you, and yeah. we were followed by an additional person. It sounded like, um, and you lost that person. Right, we did, and, and then we stumbled across that particular warehouse that had the, you know, one boarded up area that we could yeah. sneak into and stuff. But specifically, like you, like the, the, this, you found a secret entrance there that yep. led, like that you can only that that we presume leads to Longo's actual hideout because yeah. that's how he's smuggling the stuff in, right? Yeah, that's that's what we think. Um, and my my point though is I don't know if we had kept the plan of you guys uh, loudly asking about Longo or not because I. I thought we had slightly changed the plan after talking about that. So I don't, I don't know what purpose that would serve, but you guys right. do what you want there. I think I think what we want to do is, I mean, since I, I feel like we have, like, I'm trying to, since we're going there, and that's like the the place where you're supposed to meet us at the battered mug, right? After you're done there or something. To, that was yeah, the plan. Yeah. We're gonna like do some reconnaissance and then yeah. tell you what we found. Yep. Right. Um, right. Okay. So, so then, I mean, if we're going to just kind of <laughs> settle in, settle in at the battered mug, I don't see the harm in saying that we're going to follow a trail out of town again. Uh, but maybe not loudly, maybe not obviously actually like kind of put it out as like, we, we our, our trail's gone cold and we're going to retrace our steps. Uh, and, um, yeah, retrace our steps south or something like that. Or <laughs> north, since we like have found evidence of something that grows in the north or something like that. So yeah, actually. Okay, cool. So, but we're in the battered mug. There is commotion. You're mumbling to yourself in the battered mug. <laughs> I'm not, oh, no, <laughs> Rupert doesn't mumble to herself. Only I do that. Uh, <laughs> but anyways. Um, so, we're right outside uh, the battered mug at the moment. Although if you were to, you could probably walk in if you want. There's still a lot of smoke kind of above it, but obviously, quite obviously the building itself is not on fire. Whatever is on fire is coming from the room behind the room you're looking at. And at the moment, there's no one else in there except the two men, one waving this sort of what looks like a big platter, um, mm -hmm. kind of like feebly at the smoke, and the other one who is moving from uh, the room back to the uh, kind of the bar area with these buckets uh, bringing stuff back to the... They were like, hmm, they're experimenting with craft cocktails. That's exciting. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so River kind of looks at Tanya and like, hmm, and just sort of pushes in and and uh, says, um, Greetings, gentlemen. Do you need any assistance? Uh, uh, and sort of looks, well, um, no, if, if you don't mind, um, it's just going to be... Fallen, get over there! No, that, Stop waving that around, you loon! And Fallen just kind of, you know, looks slowly back at him um, and gradually lowers this enormous platter. Um, and uh, he, so he says, um, uh, No, miss, we're... Um, at the moment, we're just in the midst of um, quick renovations. Uh, I don't know. And then he kind of catches sight of you and he's like, Oh, uh, Tony, at the word renovations, Tani starts to turn towards the exit. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of, he peers at both of you, <clears throat> and then he's sort of like through the smoke, and he says, Ah, uh, would you be those, um, it might be the, the you're, you're from the, you're the heroes of Dale, aren't you? I can't see too well in the smoke, but I think so. 
Yes, yes. I am the river of Rosgobel, and this is Dane, Tony, uh, the hearthmender. And he said, oh, well, um, it's, it's, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, if you were just, um, in the midst of a few, um, adjustments to the uh, facilities, uh, if you'd like to just maybe sit, uh, towards the front here in this table, this smoke's not too bad here. And like, so there's this one table that they've, they kind of pushed a bunch of the tables to the side. You can tell to make it easier to get back and forth, probably to mm -hmm. that back room. And so it pushes the uh, table towards the front door. Um, and, uh, so there's this one table where the smoke isn't too bad because it's near the door and says, ah, uh, oh, if you, if you just uh, have a seat, I'll be with you in just a minute. Just have to finish clearing this air. Uh, well, be... friend, it seems like you're having some difficulties with fire, or oh, if well, I may be so bold, with a hearth. And as I mentioned, my friend here is known as a hearth mender, and I'm sure could uh, assist you with <laughs> whatever is taking place. <laughs> oh, uh, well, um, I... I... I, I suppose, I mean, it's, um, you see, uh, and then he kind of lowers his voice, except not very well, so it's still very obvious that he's saying, like, you see my brother fallen, he doesn't know what he's doing, and, uh, he's really a terrible cook. I, I didn't realize it until we got another cook, except that one's gone now, and I can't find him, and it's all really? a mess, and, uh, yes, uh, but, uh, so I, you, so I you're, you're, wait, it's embarrassing, you understand, uh, just a little bit. If I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying that you recently had a better cook than your first cook, but what if you could have an even better cook than that one? And he's going, a better cook? No, miss, I don't think you understand. The, the second cook, not the first one, the second cook that we had, well, that one is a, I, I mean, he had a named pan. I, I, there's, there's, <laughs> it was actually listed as, I, he, he sort of is, he's like speechless, like that, that just the omelets he made, I, my, they've been clamoring. You see the people outside and now indeed you can see that a lot more people have gathered and are kind of like peering in. He's like, I haven't been able to keep up with them except when they find out that this other one's gone, well, they might not come back again. He'll accuse me of doing something to him. I, I, he said he was going out to get some ingredients, but that was a long time ago. I don't know what ingredients he could be getting. Well, this seems like an amazing situation here, a very fortuitous one, because as it happens, I'm very interested in learning more about this new cook who you had, who was here, uh, but who isn't here presently, while my companion uh, is a wonderful cook of great renown, who is indeed truly so superb that I am sure he will not only overshadow the memory of your previous cook, but utterly erase him from your collective recollection. You hear an echo from down the street, stay out of my kitchen. <laughs> kitchen, kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lie, lie. Um, so, um, so he says, uh, it, whoa, I, those, are, those are bold words, miss, but I mean, you are the oh, heroes of Dale. I, is it, is it, is it true, sir? And he turns to you. Um, do you think you could... Could you save this kitchen? Could you provide a good and safe meal that doesn't make me rely on my brother? And Fallon is just kind of like... Looks <laughs> over at you. Um, his expression, by the way, is always somewhere between um, complete uh, catatonia and some kind of like vague bemusement. He's sort of always like... Or he's about to fall over unconscious. It's never entirely clear. Um, but yeah, so he, he asks you, like, and he, he has this, you can see that he has, like, s streaks of soot on his face, and he's sweating profusely, um, and um, inside the room does not smell particularly good between the the burning and the BO. It's not a good, uh, not a good mixture. I don't know that there is enough fire in all of Dale to save this place. Oh. But but could you try, sir? Please, it's it's a worthy institution. Really? We've been around for a long time. Um, this is Father, one of the you... oldest buildings in Dale. I mean, it started as a morgue, but it, it was when we turned it into a restaurant. It was a it had a real stake in the community. Cold storage is cold storage. Tony, are you suggesting that there is something Bolo could do that you can't do? 
That wouldn't involve him staying here. Yes. Yes. Are you suggesting that Volo is a better? No, Good. I'm saying he can stay here. Yes, but that isn't the point right now. The point is that you have an opportunity to decisively assert uh, your skills over his, and I think, for one, that you should take this opportunity. Given the same circumstances, the same, uh, you know, the, the, the it's just, uh, I think that all else being equal, it's, it's a good Moment. So you want me to take over here as the cook, so you're trying to get rid of me. That's what no, this is. No, Johnny Bear, for goodness <laughs> sake. I just, I thought it could solve your ego somewhat to be able to use th these materials and yet make something superb out of them. I believe in you. It's just a, a one-off, a stopgap in the meantime until... No doubt Bolo will return, but in the meantime, we have an opportunity to learn something more about him. Have you seen the ingredients here? I don't think all the wizards in Middle Earth could say. I don't need to see them because I can smell them from quite Thank a distance. You. But <laughs> I believe in your capacity to make a virtue of this necessity and- Fine. Thank you. So so Fallen, by the way, would that while this has been going on is just slowly like like tennis match, but five shots behind, like gradually <laughs> moving your, you know, like, um, and um, uh, Mal Malin, when he you hear that, says, oh, "Wonderful, wonderful, huh? Uh, just just come with me, please, please." And he kind of, you know, practically grabs you and pulls you bodily into the kitchen. Now, Tani, when you, I'm going to talk about Tani and River, and then I'm going to jump to Bolo and Inga. Um, by the way, Stone River is uh, currently like. Like like snorting out the smoke kind of around him, and then Aww. also, but then when the smoke is cleared and he continues to snort, you're like, is this about the smoke? Because he still clearly doesn't like something about the smell around here, and it's it's not a great smell, um, for sure. And you can see that Stone is kind of particularly There's perturbed. That, that that vine of like a like a great Pyrenees, and like somebody puts like some kind of cheese on a cracker and holds it out to him, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> but constantly like, you know, yeah, yeah. So, um, but when you brought to the, to the kitchen, Tani, so at first you just see blackness in the whole kitchen because of the, you know, and the smoke has begun to dissipate. Um, and then as it dissipates further, you realize that the black is not actually the smoke, um, that there is what seems to be like, I don't know if you could have caramelized soot, but yes, it's, it's basically, <laughs> that's what it looks like, this weird kind of oily... And it seems to have stemmed originally from a few pans and pots um, that uh, were on this open flame, and the flame is now, of course, out. And you know, there's, um, and you see some of the pots around there, and just from a quick kind of cursory look, they look not only burned, but it appears the burning is many years long of having stuff burned onto them. Um, I think I previously described the worst uh, scent in the world as being that of rotten pasta. I will continue to stand by that, that it is literally one of the worst smells of all time. Um, that's what this smells like constantly. Like, so, it, it yeah. Um, everything looks like, it does look like someone has been recently trying to do some cleaning in an area, which has sort of like, like, cleaning off a window that's foggy like it took care of this spot within the kitchen but there's a lot around it that is many years of uh something built up on it and um so Malin sort of stands there for a moment and says uh, well um this is the place uh uh sir um uh, anything I can provide you uh just say the word uh, elbow grease elbow grease uh yes uh uh, well, for that, I can um, absolutely provide you um, with my my brother here. And um, oh, so he, he kind of looks, he's like, sir, I, I'm not sure. And actually, you're not 100% sure, Tani, that there's room for three very large individuals in this room. You think maybe two, but you'd have a hard time fitting three, um, you think. Hey, they don't all have to be in here. So the one, he clearly looks like he's working on the outside anyway. So he leaves behind his silent brother, Fallen, who kind of just looks at you impassively, waiting for, apparently, instructions. So, um, Tawny hands him a, uh, 
one of the the, the worst baked on, caked on, stuck on foods, pan, and a basically a, a like a like a uh, meat tenderizer, like a, if you can find a metal meat tenderizer kind of thing. He's like, take this out back and beat the crap out of it until all this stuff falls off. And so he waits slowly, and at first you wonder if he heard you, and then you realize he's just processing, probably, and then he kind of gra- holds his arm, you know, his hand out for the stuff, um, takes it and walks in the back, and then you hear this this horrific, like, bang, bang going on in the um, in the back. Um, and in the meantime, uh, you, you sort of can look around now and see that, yes, indeed, there is caked on food and other unmentionables everywhere. Um... You hope that's food and not something else, but, uh, you know, um, and so what are you doing while he's doing that? While he's doing that, Tanya's going to basically grab something like an incredibly thick spatula. Okay, Um, there is one. And it's made of metal, I hope. Well, the thickness doesn't come from the metal, but from whatever is caked on top of the spatula. Right, but hopefully it's metal. At some point in its existence, yes. (laughs) Okay, so he's going to kind of use that as a scraping tool and start... Just hauling off and just Okay, you know. so come so river outside in the root you hear <laughs> like some terrible nasty. sound like Yeah. Yeah. Um out in the front. And um so Malin occasionally like casts a worried look over his shoulder at it, but otherwise is bustling about. And um so what are you doing, River, while he's doing that? So uh so so Malin is also working. Uh so Yep, Malin is back with Tani and Fallen sorry, Fallen is back with Tani. Malin is just out cleaning up the room. Okay, proper. great. So I think that River will sort of be like, you know, join him in that, uh in a way that isn't uh too gross. <laughs> but it is Good you luck know. With that. I was gonna say that's not <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, no, actually, that's fine. She'll she'll just gamely like help out basically and be, I guess, wiping down tables. They're not letting patrons in, yet, right? Well, they're starting to kind of drift in. Nobody's keeping them from out. out. They're sort of like mostly okay. part of it, and they you notice a lot of them are staring at you, River, as they come in, um, mm-hmm. and uh, so they all sort of sit down at various tables, which are not really clean yet, but whatever. And they're all sort of a lot of them are looking in your direction. So River is going to uh, to say to Malin quite cheerfully as, as she's cleaning and stuff. You know, it was just beginning to occur to me that I, I am a, a visitor, a guest here in Dale, but I had never been to this part of the city. And I just think that it's important when visiting a place to come to know um, all its different neighborhoods. And uh, so it's, it's really, I'm, I'm very glad of this opportunity to to come and get to know you here a little bit, Marlon. Oh, it's, um, I, I appreciate that, miss. Uh, I'm not sure why lords and ladies such as yourselves would, <laughs> would want to come to Broken Stone exactly, but uh, I'm no it's... lady. I'm from a village in a forest miles and miles away from here. But I you're the hero of Dale, and a couple people hearing this are like, oh, I'm a hero of Dale. Hero of Dale just means that I've put myself in more dangerous situations than a sensible person would in the course of a brief lifetime but uh but you know i'm i'm i have no titles i have no lands i just i travel with my dog and my friends and uh honestly i have probably (laughs) about as much in common with the fancy folk of dale as you do oi let's never say that as if she's got anything more for the likes of us. So this voice comes from someone near the door, and Malin kind of looks up, and he's like, Oi, I hear any more of that from you. You can get out, you hear me? And you can see that it's sort of an older um, older man um, holding on to this um, sort of beaten-up mug, which he might have brought in from the outside, because you didn't see any mugs when you first came there. And he sort of sullenly kind of stares down at the cup. Um... And you notice that that there are some people, when he says that, there's a couple people who kind of stare in his direction and kind of mutter to themselves angrily. There are a few others, though, that kind of nod. And you wonder, River, if there isn't sort of a difference of opinion, I guess, might be the way to put this. Oh my goodness, what is this thing from Echo? Unless something was pledged a bunch on Patreon? I think that's what that was. Let me let me just refresh that. Sorry, go on. I'm sorry, uh, Amel. I'm oh, sorry. No, River. River sort of like kind of says to Mal, "No, no, no. Please let, let him speak. I am, I am the stranger here. Um, sir, tell me more." And uh, he says, 
Aye, and... Well, you wouldn't want to hear about that, miss. You're... I'm glad you're here and all, but you got me spending reasons for coming to this place. I assume they've just got you spying on the lot of us. Probably tell the lords and ladies about what it is that we're doing wrong. Miss, begging your pardon. Uh, every time they, the uh, man says miss or something like that or begging your pardon, it almost feels to you like an afterthought that someone says to avoid getting in trouble. Not right. something which is like, you know, oh yes, miss, like, it feels more like a um, a, pr a protection rather than politeness, if you follow right, what I mean. Right, right. Oh, totally. No, but River actually like nods seriously about this, and he goes, "Not oh, that. That makes a lot of sense, actually. No, that. Yeah, it's persuasive, honestly, what you're saying. Um, I'll pay no mind to him, Missus. He's that's always this way that he is, always constantly bringing things up." And he says, if you don't like it, you can get out of here. And uh, the one sort of man, kind of old man, kind of crosses his arms and looks at him and says, that's because you don't want to lose what you've got here, Mullen, doesn't mean that I can't speak of the truth. And the truth is that they pay more attention to lords and ladies like this one, begging your pardon, miss, than the rest of us. What happened when Broken Stone was broken down in the first place? They rebuild it? No, I built a nice palace for King Bard and the rest of them likes and the rest of them lords and the higher ups and the merchants, what with their rich robes and all. But did they do anything for us down here in Broken Stone? No, we're the last ones to pay any attention. Now you take when the poisoning started to happen and a couple people near him are like, shut up, it's just one inch. And they start like, like poking at him to get him to be, he's like, well, what, what? It's not like it's not common knowledge. They're trying to kill us here in Broken Stone and we all know it. What? So, River is like, blinks a little at this and says, you know, I'm, I'm from a small village where everyone knows everyone else and everyone has the same as everyone else. There, we don't have rich people and poor people because we all have to work together and live together and we build each other's houses and we tend each other's children and we don't have gold and riches and Dale is the biggest place, the biggest city that I've ever been in. And there are many beautiful things here, but there's also a lot that it's taken me by surprise. And the state of Broken Stone is one of those things. I have never seen the unfairness of this before. And I think you're right, friend, if I may call you friend. I don't know you, but I would like to be friends. But I think you're right. I think that this is a shame and it should be addressed. And I'm not here to spy on your doings and report on you, but I would speak for you on, or sorry, not for you, but speak on your behalf to anyone who will listen well and he sort of like kind of moves around and you hear a general murmur of approval even from the people who were nodding before and um and malin sort of looks over and um kind of and this gives a self-satisfied smile like you know nodding at the old man and the old man says oh, well it's nice words you got there miss and maybe you mean them i don't know but well, actions mean more than words, if you understand what I mean. I do. I believe you. That's why I'm, like, <laughs> holding up her rag. It's like, you know? <laughs> and he sort of oh, nods please. and says, well, yeah, I suppose. I, I, I didn't mean to speak out of turn, but, well, it, no one ever pays attention to us here. And, well, anyway, maybe you can set all the rights. And if you could do that, then you would be Heroes of Dale. All the Dale, not just the parts where the buildings are high enough to see over the walls. Maybe, maybe you'd be the hero of everyone if you could do that. But I think that would be a goal worth striving for, absolutely. But tell me, I would hear more about these poisonings, because if anyone is actually hurting the people of Broken Stone, 
I would also like to set that to right. So there's a there's a kind of general like it's, people are like oh hey, shut up he doesn't know what he's doing blah, blah, blah. and they're like there's this is obviously a point of some contention mm-hmm. and um and he he says um well miss uh, boy I don't well and he kind of looks around I, I'd rather you just speak here and he kind of like points to a chair by him and he says uh, not what I should be lower than you miss but if you don't mind sitting in the chair I could I could tell you all quiet like. River like sort of grabs the chair, swivels it, does the, does the like Riker thing. That's just how I imagine. Yeah, yeah. And like ah, and sits down just like nice and close, and and also uh, mentions to <laughs> calls out to Tawny and say, Tawny, a uh, couple of pints when you get a minute. <laughs> you hear this over the <laughs> Tawny in the room. <laughs> oh, when I get a minute. <laughs> You hear his voice through the somewhat smoky air, although it's getting clearer every second. Um, and uh, so he sits down. So when you sit down, he kind of, um, he says, and just before you get started, Malin comes over. He says, um, Miss, don't take this the wrong way. <clears throat> wrong voice. Miss, don't take this the wrong way, but I wouldn't necessarily trust anything he says here. Labus has been part of us for a long time, but he's, he's, got, a, he's got an imagination, you might say. Oi, I got an imagination about the way the food used to be. For about 24 hours, it was better, and then it went back to being the same way. So why don't you be silent, Malin, and clean up some of the soot around this place? Uh, you blah, blah, blah. So, you know, Malin bustles off, annoyed. Um, and so the uh, man who's described, described as Labus um, sort of leans forward and says, um, Well, miss, it's like this. About maybe six months ago, or some there, thereabouts, there started to be some strange doings around here. I mean, it's broken stone. There's always strange things going on a little bit, but more strange than usual. And some of the children in here, we have some, you know, and a little, with a little flare of his old resentment. And he says, um, some of the children started to get sick. No one really knew why, but all of them were, well, drinking from one of the rivers that goes down here. Well, it's never been all that clean, but... Usually, they can clean enough and strain it out to make it all right for the children. Well, so they started drinking it, and they just started to get sick. And at first, we didn't know what it was about, but it seemed like the more that they drank, the sicker they got. So we sent people over to the wells in the middle of the city, and that ain't no easy trek for many of us, but none miss either. We had to go over there, get the water, and bring it back. And then the rich folks in that side of Dale told us they didn't want us taking their water. And meanwhile, where's King Bard? Well, he just vanished. Some people say he was worried about something going on up in the palace, but how do I know? I just live here. And so we had to find water elsewhere, sometimes send people out, bring it in in barrels from places outside the city. When we started doing that, it was hard on us, but at least the children started to get better. But there's something about the water, miss. It don't. It isn't right somewhere. And, well, that's all I know. Some people say that it's crazy, that we just imagine the whole thing. But I know what I saw. And again, so there's now a good number of people, like four or five people gathered around the table. There are some people standing up, surrounding you as well, um, kind of listening in. And so whenever he, and when he finishes that story, just by a quick check, you would say that more people are nodding than aren't, but there are a few people that are kind of, uh, you know, like, seem to be dismissing it. But there are a few people, there are more than that that seem to be acknowledging that this is the reality. Huh. I'm so sorry to hear that. That sounds like a dreadful, dreadful thing to have lived through. The, do you know, have, has anyone gotten sick from drinking the water recently? Well... I don't rightly know, miss, because we haven't been using it. Um, you know, since this happened, we've been just getting trying to get our water from elsewhere best we can. Some people told the guard, but they sort of told us it wasn't something they had to, the chance to investigate or the men to do it. Huh. I'd have the men to do it if there was something going on over at the castle, I'll tell you that much. Hmm. Interesting. And it's just the river here. The, this, the, what, sorry, what, what's the name of the river? I've forgotten. It's the... Uh, well, it's, I actually don't remember the particular river that this is. Um, the one that's running through it is probably just referred to as the Broken Stone River because it's the one okay. that, there's, there's basically on two sides, right? So you've got this side over here and then you've got this side over here. But the one that he seems to be referring to is this one because it's longer. 
um, and seems to have more of a flow. Um, this oh. one is sort of shut off by buildings and things like that. So, so it's the, the canal, I, not the river. Uh, yeah, they, they call it the ah. river, though. But yes, the canals would be more of what it's like. Gotcha. Um, What's about to say? Those are not rivers. Those are canals. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they, they call it the river, though. Um, but, mm. well, but yeah, they are definitely canals. Right. <laughs> Agree. <Okay. laughs> Just imagining an alternate world where I named this character the canal instead of the river. <laughs> but anyway, um, <clears throat> so R River nods thoughtfully about this and says, "Thank you for telling me this. This is a terrible thing for anyone to have to be dealing with to not be able to trust your own water. <sighs> it's been difficult, Miss, but well, it's not the first time we've been ignored." But mm. at least we could get by if we had the ability to at least drink and stay alive, you know? Instead, we have to rely on this terrible whatever this swill is. And he kind of raises his voice. And <laughs> Malin is like, ah, blow it out your ear, Lavis. <laughs> well, well, Lavis, if I may call you that, I, I want to fix this. Um... I'm going to speak to my friend and see what we can do. I don't know if you know this about uh, my companion, but uh, Tawny Bear is a, a healer um, and of some great skill. And I'm going to tell him about this and, and see if anything can be done. Excuse me. And he, uh, so she gets up and and goes to the kitchen, but, but not before like saying, like, making eye contact and saying thank you for this um, and well right well thank you miss this is the first time he says miss where it doesn't seem like a you know like a <laughs> little ward against evil word you say at the very end uh yeah um he says, you can call me the river that's what my friends do all right well uh, i thank you the river miss he seems he seems a little <laughs> awkward he's like uh the, the the miss the river the river miss you know river's fine um <clears throat> and um so as you make your way into the kitchen i'm going to jump to Inga and bolo in just a minute but as you make your way into the kitchen you notice that a lot more people now have sort of come in and started gathering around uh tables and the like um and uh you know some people are beginning to ask for ale and mead and you see now mullen is actually beginning to move around and kind of do that for people while in the meantime tawny is uh continuing to scrape pots and i guess i would say by the time the river gets in there tawny you're probably done doing that with at least a pot or two or a pan or two where it's like now just vaguely off instead of being horrifically disgusting you know um is, is what you would say very well seasoned if this were a walk you know it would be <laughs> let me tell you um how is Tony doing on honey cakes out of curiosity? Is he, are you actually, are you thinking of baking some? Not here. Not here? No. <laughs> no. Um, I was, I was debating uh, whether it would be uh, a thing to, you know, distribute uh, amused bushes of very small amounts of honey cake uh, to the patrons, but um, but anyway, River uh, sidles up to Tawny and um, uh, like starts to just like help out with whatever cleaning kind of thing can be nearby. Barely fitting in, by the way, because um, there's two large uh, men in this place already, but you can fit in there. Uh, Stone uh, is trying to follow you, though. I don't yeah. know if you want Stone to like stay, but otherwise Stone is like sniffing experimentally in the um, in the kitchen. Um, Tawny, Tawny is, to say that he is disheveled is putting it mildly. His, his hair is now munged pretty good. He is not quite as sooty <laughs> as Fallen. His hands, you might think he was wearing gloves at first, but when you get closer, you realize he's not. They're just dirty and greasy and shiny. Car mechanic and, in a non-game yeah, fashion. Yeah. River, right. River looks at Tawny and grins and says, have you been using your head to scrub that pan? Possibly. I could borrow yours for a few <laughs> years if you like. <laughs> uh, River says, uh, Fallon, would you mind giving... I just, I just need a little a little room. You, I think Malin wants your help out there. And so Fallon kind of turns and looks down at you for probably a couple more seconds than is strictly comfortable. 
and then slowly moves past you um, and out into the uh, improper. Uh, Zorver like sidles up next to Tawny and uh, not quite looking at him, quite like, you know, b busying herself uh, with the cleaning as well, says. Folks here have been being poisoned by the water in the nearest canal for the last six months. I'm thinking that either that's a sort of proof of concept thing or that they might have been smuggling something through the river, through the canal, that's been contaminating it. Which might mean, if you get a sample of the canal water, maybe you could do something with it? Possibly. Also, this is a disgrace, and Bard should know of it. This place? Yes, I agree. I don't mean the pub. I mean everything to do with Broken Stone. I mean, I know that when the, the, the dragon was killed and the wealth was distributed, it was shared among men and elves and dwarves. But I always thought that meant it was shared equally among men on some level. The fact that on one side of this town people live with wealth and on the other side they don't? That doesn't make any sense. Just means that something of the dragon's nature lives in this town still. If some people are hoarding wealth and others have nothing. Makes me sick. And it's clearly making them sick. Speaking of sickness, if you were to treat broken stone as a festering wound, to make it worse and worse and worse till it becomes horribly infected, gangrenous, to the point that the only solution is to get rid of it. This would certainly be a way to do it. You've got a group of people who, as you say, are not especially looked down kindly upon. But if you make them more and more wretched until such time as everything they have that gives them hope has been taken or destroyed, and you just make them sicker and sicker and sicker until such time as the entire district needs to be purged and something more pleasant to look upon gets put in its place. Hmm. Hmm. So destruction may not be the end goal in the eyes of whomever. But rather a sort of gentric gentrification by fire or poison. You know, it's <sighs> it's so it's so strange to see that everything that we've lived through and fought was sort of honest <laughs> that there is a simplicity to facing a dragon or even slavers, but this is... Insidious. Oh, it's insidious, yes. It is. It's cowardly and wriggling. Sort of like whatever that is in that bucket of ah! water. <laughs> Which does seem to be wriggling a little bit. Yes. Or maybe it's just the water. Also, it's the close it's the cleanest thing I could find. You asked for two pints, you almost got two pints of whatever that is. Oh well, you know. Who can we shouldn't turn down any protein, I think. I our, think you what? should. <laughs> <laughs> uh um anyway. Uh River says, Well, I I'm happy to continue to help out here if I if I can assist further. I mean we're we're going to wait for I don't know. I, I've, I'll. I'll 
I'll talk a bit about our next steps while we wait for our companions. Let me know if you need any more help over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. uh, so, um, I basically, I don't think, I don't know that we need to belabor this, but what River is going to do is like, I think she'll take a seat with Lavis again and, um, uh, and, you know, uh, start telling people stories or, or she'll like, or, you know, she'll do something entertaining. She'll start telling stories, maybe, um, can be coaxed into like a performance of something, but in among that, uh, will say, um, in a way that, that is kind of like speaking directly to some people around her like right we're following we, we have some suspicions as to why the water might be poisoned and we think the source of that might be north so the first thing tomorrow i think we'll be heading out to follow that and just kind of okay but you know in among being otherwise yeah, yeah. Feeling convivial <clears throat> as you're doing that and i would say that pretty close to this time is when uh, bolo and inga are going to arrive but I want to back up a few minutes to Bolo and Inga um, as a few minutes in game time as uh, you were making your way up. Now, when we last left our heroes, um, these these particular heroes, um, you were making your way up from this warehouse. Um, this, and I should actually type this in, the alleged claim as to where the hideout is is here. But the um, warehouse that you found with the tunnel is here. Um, are you pinging or because go. I don't see anything happening? I'm just typing. Just give me one second here. Um, oh, whoops. Sorry. There we go. So I there's see. the there's the tunnel. Um, and so the tunnel is there, but the hideout supposedly was here. So the reason I just bring that up is how are you making your way up to the battered mug? Because you could, you know, do it more directly. You could go over to the east this way or you could just try to, you know, wind your way up through broken stone but avoiding the hideout so i just wondered because i know you had wanted to pass by or i thought that was one option was passing by the hideout um but i didn't know how you wanted to manage it uh i have no idea Bono? Okay. um <clears throat> well i don't know that we want to call any more attention to ourselves than we already have. We have a potential entrance. This is the tunnel is going to lead somewhere. So my vote would be to skirt, you know, go up the canal and head to the battered mug and not, not go by the hideout. Uh, okay. You lead the way. Okay. Um, as you're doing this, are you trying to, sort of stealthily avoid notice at all? Or are you just kind of walking normally? Well, I mean, I guess if we are gonna try to avoid the hideout, we might as well take the long way around this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Woo! We were, we were, that's the way, well, we went like, where am I? Here. You know, we kind of traveled along this route right. to get here. Right. I wonder if we should take this inside street if you we're trying to avoid them, yep, they totally might be backtracking to trying to find us again, which that's, they were. That's fair. Mm. Okay. I'm almost thinking we should go through this this thick, you know, area here. Although we don't, I don't know it well. I don't know. That we... sounds like trouble that we don't <laughs> want. <laughs> that sounds like an ambush uh, about to happen. So let's just take this route then, I guess. Okay. But we will. Um, look for those people that were following us before we leave. Okay. I will ask both of you to make perception checks, please. First rolls the game. Actually, I'm going to put both of you down here in the tunnel. Okay. Yeah. Got dad 11, though. And that 13. Yeah, um, <coughs> when you come out, it seems fairly quiet. There are a few people kind of making their way up and down the street, but no one that seems obviously suspicious, and you don't None of them are like seem to be paying any attention looking at you. They're just kind of moving along um, the street on their own business. Um, although as you move up farther into Broken Stone, it's going to get a lot busier. Um, but down in this area, this is kind of a spot that's sort of a dead zone in terms of a lot of traffic. So, all right, just just to play it safe, I'm um, I'm going to ask Inga to 
to go ahead like we've done before, and mm. I'm, I want to use my ability to just slip into the shadows and just follow her. Okay. And just okay. see if she's being tailed. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, I guess in this case, uh, Inga would like try to walk as openly as possible. Okay, but still so following the same route, though, right? So that she would like basically draw attention away from Bolo. Okay, but following the same route, right, that you were planning on doing? Yes. Okay. All right, so um, I would say you make your way. I'm going to put you pretty much all the way just about to about here. Um, and during that time, I'm going to have Bolo make one perception check for me, um, please. One further perception check. And go ahead and move your tokens up to this yeah, area, I was going to say. Woof. So it looks like a nine. Yeah, I, not you don't see anyone in particular that seems to be following her. You're pretty confident that no one's watching. No one sees you, Bolo, at least. If they are, right. they're pretty damn good. Um, okay. But you don't see anyone in particular trailing her, you know. But again, tailing her, although there are a number of people kind of moving around. It is sort of busy now at this point. Um, but nothing in particular that seems to suggest that you are being singled out in any way. Um, and uh, when you arrive um, pretty much here, you can... The first thing you notice, Bolo uh, and uh, Inga, as you get there, is the smell. Because you don't see, um, from the outside, you don't see any sign of Tani or the river or stone. But you do smell this weird kind of... Well, the usual unique smells of the battered mug combined with some kind of sulfurous, like, just burned fireplace type of smell, almost. Um, creosote. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, exactly. Like, is, you do that, that, that creosote smell kind of billowing out a little bit from the inside. It's, it's faint. I shouldn't say billowing. It's not strong, but it definitely is there. And it sounds like it's fairly busy inside uh, the inn. Um, and are you, I assume everybody's just, like, moving into the inn, basically, if I'm not mistaken? Bolo and Inga, um, particularly? <clears throat> yes. I, I still want to keep up my my ruse, so I'm going to let Inga go out ahead. Okay. Um, and it, for, for the time being, I'm going to stay back, but I'm going to ask that she just report in, let them know what we found, and then we should probably head back out. Uh, okay. If, if that's what we're doing. Yeah, you're probably about an hour now before the time that it's dark and supposedly you okay. are going to make your whatever so um okay so if you're going to do that then inga uh when you enter you can see uh for sure that there are um there's a number of people in here and you notice that um there are a number of people around a table near the front the tables look like they've been sort of shifted <laughs> from like against the the walls of the room this sort of common area you see a large man with a um sort of a leather apron um sweat stained um, kind of moving around uh, from table to table. There's a fair number of people in here now. The smell is pretty bad. Um, you can you can tell that that's the case. You see no sign of Tani, but you do see Stone lying at the feet of the river, who is in a group of very interested observers, like people from the town, it looks like. Um, and you can see that she's near the front. River, um, I would say that... No, actually, I don't think River would notice you at first, because River's focusing on the people there, so you probably see her first, Inga. Um, there's no sign of Tani, but just this big dude in a leather apron walking around, uh, tending to people outside here in the big common room. Uh, yeah, I walk up to River and go, Wow, this place is a dump. So all the people <laughs> kind of look up at you. <laughs> and a couple of them a couple of them are like, Oh, it's the... It's another one of those the heroes of Dale, it is. Yeah, it's that's that's it's oh that's Thane Inga. Thane Inga, yeah. She's a uh, Lord of Dale and then they start like messing up your title. D D D D Dane King, Lord of the Peoples, you know, <laughs> the stuff with the thing. And they start like, you know, all kind of trying to correct each other about your title. Um and none of them seem to have taken any of offense whatsoever to calling it a dump. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Yes, <laughs> and this Lord of the People would like the a drink with the highest percentage alcohol because I think anything else would just be literal poison instead of figurative poison to the body here and at least it will be antiseptic if it's gonna have a high percentage so I think that should be safe to drink so doesn't Inga have like resistance to poison <laughs> as a dwarf? Yeah, yeah but like she still has like some self-respect so mm -hmm. like, nice. a little, a little resistance bit. to respect <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she like grabs a chair from one of the neighboring tables and sits down. 
Okay. Next to stone. Next to River uh, and pet stone. I was gonna head. say stone nuzzles yeah. you affectionately. <laughs> River, uh, uh, River <laughs> takes this in stride, uh, and uh, God, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember what. Yeah, so tight. Oh, yeah. that was. Yes, indeed. Um, who, who was I'm, that? Who sneezed? Not, not on this side. Um, but uh, I'm trying to remember like a funny thing that has happened to Inga uh, during our travels, and I'm trying to think of something. Which more... one? <laughs> Just, yeah. What? what? Which, which one? one? Which one? Well, exactly. I'm trying to think of, like which one would be the funniest to tell. Like which, which time when you fell into the. Uh, um, the Anduin and stuff like that. But Hanging no, 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 on to no, the no. walls. That is... No, 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 the... wait, which wall? That's a question here. Multiple walls. Those... Multiple yeah. walls, yeah. Not of the... Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, Robar uh, of Sainted Memory was the one who most often fell into the Anduin and couldn't get out. But I feel like Inga also had some such badnesses. But other than No, that... she fell into the river running at some point, but not into the Anduin. Oh, uh, that's true. Okay, I think, right. if I remember correctly, but... Were you around for the thing with the uh, goblins where Inga had to dress up as one and the soup? Or that's where you met. That's where you. It was that where, where you guys met, I think. That's where was that was. adventure. Yes. Yep. Okay, so, so, so basically. We're so, like, how did you two meet? Oh, dearie, why don't you tell the story? Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, so it was like, Inga, I'm so glad to see you. I was just about to tell everyone the story of how we met, which, oh, okay. as I recall, involved you dressing up as a goblin to serve them soup. It feels like, I mean, and, uh, and do, do you want to tell the story or shall I just continue? Uh, I mean, you can tell the story, but like, Inga looks around, like... I'd like Polo to make it... Should we take any soup from that goblin cave uh, over whatever they are probably serving here, so... Let me have, <laughs> let me have Polo make a perception check while you guys are in this conversation. Sad part is I wasn't even there for that session. Oh, man. Yeah, I had to watch the VOD. Very okay. ill timing. Um, just I would say that you notice a lot of people kind of um, kind of moving in and out of the battered mug now, Bolo. Um, no one seems to have noticed you yet as you kind of observe in the shadows. Um, but it definitely seems even a little busier than when you were there. Um, you know, not this, you know, some hours ago um, for whatever that's worth. But yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I, I will keep an eye out. <clears throat> I was actually going to the back of the inn just to. I was check on my that. domain, so to speak. Okay. Uh, but I will be keeping an eye out for suspicious activity, whatever that means. If we were followed. Okay. Are you so? Are you going to make now? As far as I know, I think there is a place to be. You'd have to like do a bunch of like, you know, climbing over roofs and stuff like that to get to the back. I think um, you'd probably have to move into the inn. So I'm, I'm just wondering, it's going to be hard to avoid no, I, any attention if you do that. I don't want to. I don't want to go inside the inn. Okay. I'm just going to keep an eye on the goings on outside i got gotcha. you okay yeah okay that's what i figured um okay um so um sorry go on uh, continuing in the river uh, and i'm going to come back to uh, tawny in a second tawny by the way when you're done with the whole like scraping the heck out of things and uh you know all that sort of stuff have you then gotten into some cooking of some kind and if so what are you going to attempt to cook <laughs> such as it is you remember the soup that arwen made uh with the gigantic globules yes. of fat. Yes. Yeah. That's probably about the best you can do. And it's, uh, yeah, that face, Amal. That face right there. <laughs> That's about the best he can do in this place, I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I'm just. Split I pea think, fat. It's great soup. So, that's know. fine. I, I think that rather than imagine the failure mode of whatever it is that he is trying to make, I think you should just. just you know, do a cook and and see how it is received. That's all. I just I I think that that would be good. You know how we embrace the dice here when they yes. follow the narrative. Exactly. No. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> when I roll, we're back in the bees nest. <laughs> yeah. No, when I mean, you roll I... An, if you roll a natural one, it's like probably like the the pot dissolves. <laughs> you know, like Monkey Island rock style. Yeah, yeah. I actually had the image that it was gonna like go all the way around the circle back to being good again. Like it's so bad that it somehow re-enters good at the other it's side. It's so bad that it's actually avant-garde. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah no, no, like, no, it's like just 
burns away your taste buds, so you can't even taste it's it. It's like sour cream, it's like or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> Alina, or so no, Alinea at Broken Stone, or something. Like yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. like... LMA, is it? Or something completely just like the green herb at Broken Stone or something. You yes! Know, like... Yes! Oh, you get gosh. the molecular gastronomy going there where the molecules are globules of fat. <laughs> so, where did you get this green herb? From the butcher shop. I peeled <laughs> exactly. it off the meat. You know, they're really doing something with this area. It looks like Williamsburg. It's just, you know, you wouldn't yes! know. Yes! Like, um, oh, I like had this terrible headache, but now that I ate this white fluffy stuff, it's yeah. suddenly gone. And no one wants to admit that they're like, this is really bad food. Like, no, it's not. It's delicious. Shut up. We paid $7 per um, ounce. $70 <laughs> per ounce. So, Tony yeah. just created um, uh, antibiotics. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we call Somewhere it... The kitchen is like fermented fish. We're like this far away from fish flakes. and yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. Luke's oh God, what was like the proto ketchup from like ancient Greece or something? No, ancient Rome, sorry, where it's just, just like fermented fish oil or something and it sounds absolutely disgusting and then we're eating You're like right, so much of it. We need to look up what that was called. Let's be clear, most fermented is starting you out at a difficult stage. I mean, like there are things that have to ferment, I understand that, but just, you know. It really sounds familiar. It's like, it's like, here, eat rotting this. And you're like, I don't know. Um, okay, so, um, so Tani, I am gonna actually ask you, are you producing, are you gonna try to produce enough food to kind of start, I guess I'm wondering if you're focusing on a particular plate and testing it out, or you're basically doing the mass quantity thing of that yeah, soup mass. that you talked about. Okay, so I'm and not gonna... necessarily a soup, but you know, just a stew. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I am... um, Some... By the way, Something... the stuff is called garum. Mm. G a r u m. Mm. There's a great video on YouTube which I'm gonna find and link about how that stuff is made garum, and how you can huh? make it yourself at home, and I that you don't. should not drink it pure. <laughs> I'm going to ask... Uh, go ahead. I'd like to rename our, our game uh, Tales of the Battered Mug. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> I'm, I am I am uh, hoping and assuming we get out of the Battered Mug sometime by 2022. No, um, you we, are I'm, not the only one. Yeah. No, I, I have a suspicion that we'll be doing that quickly. Um, so um, when uh, this is basically just as this time is going on, I almost said for flavor, and then I thought, oh, that's it is for flavor, if you know what I mean. Um, spice. I'm going to ask you to make... Um, I think I'm going to actually ask you to make a. I'm going to ask you to make a medicine check for me, Tawny. It's a little weird, but I think I think that's probably the closest we've got. <laughs> See if you succeed at making. Tawny's yeah, got a penicillin. A, a, a thing. And he, he has a white cloth tied around. It was a white cloth when he came <laughs> in here. Oh man. Wrapped around his face so that he can't smell what he's dealing with. It's like the mask fail in reverse. Like nobody puts oh. it over their nose, but this yeah. is like nobody puts it over their mouth for some reason. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So make a medicine check for me, please. Nine. So. Are you joking? You you produce. <laughs> Don't poison people. There is a liquid, and um and it and it does have um smell and scent, and texture, uh, and there are, you know, <laughs> items within it. Um, that would be of a stew. It's art, liquid, and solid. Yeah. I should have inspired you. So you it have does this... have a specific temperature. Yeah, it just you think it's warm-ish, um, and so you bring it. So you bring it out, kind of like, and and sort of almost staggering like a under... layer of something on top. Yeah, it's like you know, right? Exactly. You know the soup that you have to like, you know, like scrape the layer off the top, like cream of mushroom soup or something. Nice, like... Tim. Yeah, yeah. See, exactly. <laughs> Of oh my gosh. Why do you just it? have a plague mask chambered <laughs> and ready? Like what? We're in a plague, so it makes perfect sense. I, I made that a few weeks, like a month ago, I you think. You made that? Yes. Of course she made it. From of course. I love the microphone on the side of the like, pair of sunglasses. <laughs> have you ever actually worn it out of the out of like have you worn that in public? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> I think you would be amazing if you did. <laughs> Ideally, uh, in a situation oh, where you don't, in a in a situation where you don't actually need to have a mask on, like if you were just out of doors or whatever. But I think that'd be amazing. That's wild! Wow. Um, okay, so looking like some combination of uh, dishonored and plague mask. Where I mean, like something. Um, that's pretty sweet. So, um, and uh, I love the fact that it's also hey, combined Echo, with the Santa says hat. I don't have a black robe. Like. Oh. Well, <laughs> I assume that you have all of these things at all times, Terry, is what I assume about you. I have you. three options, even. <laughs> I'll bet. 
Oh my goodness. So, um, so Tani comes out um, with this stuff. Um, and uh, you see people kind of all looking expectantly and you begin to ladle out um, this um, whatever it is um, to various people and um, River they... looks at it and is like and just looks at Tawny with this look of baffled <laughs> disappointment. He just sort of sets like one side of the, the tray on the table so he can let go and just like <laughs> 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 Well, it's like that scene in the Tim Burton Batman right after the surgeon gets done with the joke. It's like you see what I have to work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> River says uh, the only thing that River says actually is, "All right, well, first bacon, now scoop, I guess." Um, and uh, so people begin to eat this. The general sort of reaction is um, sort of muted. Um, and part, I, I think if you had arrived after the cooking, such as it was, of Fallen, you probably would have been hailed as a yet another hero of the Battered Mug. But, but after Bolo, like, I mean, you know, with the, with the work of Flank Searer, you know, you don't quite measure up. And so their reaction is like kind of a, uh, and, um, except for one guy actually back is kind of like, yeah. I love it. I'll have more of yours if you're not having any. Oh, I love mine. And like, is, you know, like eating it furiously. But everyone else is kind of like, it's okay-ish. Yeah. It's edible. River just shakes her head in disappointment. You had one job. One job. No, Bolo, let me... actually, I had seven. Let me have you make mm. another perception check, Bolo, please. I have an inspiration to offer, by the way, if anyone would like one on account of it being December. And also probably the last one of the month because I have all my tabletop front loaded this month. So, <laughs> no, it's, you know, you're like, hey, listen. I'm like laser focused on how people are reacting to the food right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not reacting well. You can, you can, and you can see that because you can just see inside the door where they are. A smile breaks over Bolo's face. <laughs> <laughs> pumping his fist like oh man um okay Rudinell has inspired my legacy training. is to cure <laughs> Rudinell has inspired who? has inspired has inspired Tawny except I think that's funny it's my trend because I have this image of Tawny being like to avoid shame and despair like I need to roll I need to be sick of saving throw versus guilt um you know to, to do this um Okay, so this continues, and uh, you all basically now know that you're all <clears throat> sort of together. I would say I, I do want to speed this forward a bit, because I do want us to yeah. get out of the battered mug. Um, and uh, kind of, you know... Not alone. So, yeah, I, I want people to move <laughs> forward here. So I guess the question is, once you've relayed, what are the things you want to relay to each other in terms of the most important information? You don't have to RP all of this if you don't want to, but just what info do you want to communicate? And Bolo... Is there a point at which you will join the rest of them, or will you continue to stay, you know, kind of in your shadowy uh, hiding place? I'm actually going to wait for them to leave. Okay. Right. So, um, how yeah. safe does this place look to, like, talk about all these... Do you have any open cuts? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... Wait, the, I the... cut myself earlier today. Yes, I do. <laughs> Don't go in <laughs> oh, no. So River is going to like what when Inga arrives, like after coaxing Inga to tell stories or whatever, uh once Tawny comes out and they're together, she's going to say to the two of them, uh, with the thing that she said to the previous to the, the patrons around them, um, that uh <clears throat> the the folks in this in this part of town have been saying that they've been experiencing poisonness uh, poison effects from drinking the water in the canal and since we have our suspicions about why that might be and where that might be coming from i think our best course of action is to go north as soon as possible and intercept these shipments this wait 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 these are canals mm. inside a very populated town mm -hmm. Of course the water is poisonous. Like all the gunk, like all the poo and piss more, and whatever else yes, yes, the people yes. goes to do these canals. More poisonous than usual and more poisonous specifically to the people who live in this area. They've been getting their water from other parts of town and not suffering those ill effects. So 
clearly something's getting concentrated here. Mm -hmm. And I think, as discussed, we should probably head north the way that we yes. said we would. Disgust, so. indeed. I was going to say disgust <laughs> or disgust. <laughs> as we discuss. So we shouldn't dilly dally here any longer, I think. Malin, thank you for your hospitality. My apologies for my colleague's uh, lackluster attempt at uh, shoring up your staff deficit. But... <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Wait, you own this to... place? This guy owns this place? Uh, yes, yeah. I do, miss. Um, and you welcome really to need to clean up in here. Like, Well, this is... <laughs> We've been doing that, Miss. This is as clean as it's been in a long time. Hey! hey let's go! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So then, uh, anyway, so uh, River will, like, sort of, um, you know, take her leave and, and clap Labus on the shoulder and say uh, thank you again and <clears throat> possibly suggest that she'll look him up if they need to follow up anything about... Um, social justice <laughs> in town. <laughs> oh, thank, uh, thank you, miss. And, uh, yeah. Shall we head on? River has been assuming that, that, like, Bolo is to be found, but also has not been naming him here, so, um, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, when you come out, I would assume at that point, Bolo, once you see them kind of exit, you can then... Yeah, I'll join up with them. Okay. Um, and so you see Bolo sort of suddenly, like, appear out of the shadows almost. <laughs> um, and uh, as you make your way. Um, so now you can decide, I guess, which route you're going to take um, in terms of where, where you're heading. Well, so, right. <clears throat> so we do have that, you know, we have the hideout. Uh, and we did find that tunnel, which... I would prefer to explore, uh, maybe not go directly at their their hideout since the other <clears throat> theoretical entrance is not guarded currently. Um. So okay, so I'm just taking so the so on the map we've got this is the theoretical hideout. Mm -hmm. This is the tunnel that you found. <laughs> yeah. What is this X again? That is where you found or where Bolo found the old. Um, Apothecary. Right. They had that big, uh, you know, showdown with Brindle and, and um, the, the lady with the cat. Do we know where? Do we know where Brindle is? According to what you we were the plan, know. Brindle is somewhere around the hideout, someplace with her people, or should be when the, which is about forty-five minutes from now, when the you know attempt is going to be made on the hideout, one way or the other. Hmm. So presumably has already stationed her people around it. If she did what she said she would do. Okay. All right. Um, all right. All right, and we had that bit at the end of the last session where she was already stationed there, that's right. Um, <clears throat> so I think what we want to do um, is potentially... So, the, so we're here, we have several goals. One is to make an antidote for a poison. One is to, for which we need a sample of the poison, which we know is in the skeins of um, thread in the tunnel. Somewhat, although probably you would need more of the actual stuff that was used to infuse it. Um, so, right. but, you know, presumably that wouldn't be too far from where the skeins were, or at least there's a trail, maybe. Right. Um, there's also, I mean, having talked to the people about the water, I think River is probably going to say, like, to Tawny that we should get a sample of the river water, of the, of the canal water from nearby. Um, Makes sense? I like, guess it's, it's right there, so it shouldn't be a detour, right? Um, sure. And uh, I think also, yeah, I don't know. The thing that I would probably say we should be doing at this point is not all going en masse to the hideout that Bolo, to the tunnel that Bolo found, but maybe like split up to get there um, if he can tell us how to get there. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm just talking and, and chilling silently. <clears throat> um, I mean, we, we could, Inga knows the way, we could 
just trail the way back that we came because we we don't think we were followed, <clears throat> so we could follow that same path. Well, all right. So, right. Wait, are we going to the hideout or the tunnel? The tunnel. Oh. The tunnel. Although, actually, maybe this is an instance where um, that should. So, here's what I would propose. All right. Um, and again, like, like as as quietly as possible, as once there. Uh, like river's gonna gesture that we head towards the river to get a sample of water for Tani, so towards the canal. Um, and uh, and as they're on route there, uh, once Bolo has caught them up on what they found, suggest that that Bolo and Tani go to the hideout if that's where Brindle is going to be, and that Inga and River go to the tunnel. Um, and uh, follow it to like come up within the hideout. Well, we we're not positive that the tunnel even leads to the hideout. Oh, that's true. <clears throat> we, we suspect it may, but we don't know it for sure. Okay. And I, and Brindle didn't tell me exactly where she was going to be. I can't like call upon her. I assume she is near the hideout and sort of waiting for her chance to strike. Um, but we didn't have a solid plan in place. But what was she expecting of you? Just that you would bring us? That we that, that we were going to infiltrate his hideout tonight, um, perhaps to create enough of a diversion for her to, to find him and strike and at least do damage against him. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe take him out? <clears throat> she didn't reveal all of her, all of her plans to me, what was this? Okay. In fact, she didn't reveal much of anything of her plan. <laughs> Well, hmm. So I think the tunnel is the most promising lead we have. Uh, yeah, in terms of my vote would be to go there and just to, to see, well, see what we see and, and see if that gives us a, an entrance to the hideout um, that's, you know, below the regular uh, reconnaissance they're running. Mm hmm Right. All right. Well, but that also sounds like the riskiest uh, Aspect, like the, the place most likely to encounter violence potentially, which is why I think that the axe wielders in the, in the party should maybe be the ones to go that route. Although that said, getting stone inside might be difficult, but stone can stay with you. Hmm. What? Well, my vote would be to stick together because we don't know what we're going to find. <clears throat> We True. could head if that heads to the hideout. We'd all be together, unseen theoretically at that point, um, and it would at least have the element of surprise. Right. Out of character, you're just so bad at telling whether you're being followed. <laughs> so, um, but you know, there's never a guarantee of that anyway. Um, all right. Well, why don't we split up? just enough to get to the tunnel then. Um, and you and Tani form one posse, Ing and I form another posse. We'll meet at the tunnel tower thing and uh, go on from there. Of course. Sure. All right. So then what I'm going to ask uh, Tani and Inga to do, assuming both, both, of the, both of you are trying to be, both groups are trying to be stealthy in their arrival there, um, yeah. are, are you? So then I'm going to yes. ask... Tani and Inga first to make uh, a stealth check, please, for me. Each of you to make a stealth check, and we'll see how this goes. So I'm partly, I'm partly wanting, like, you know, the stealthiest person to be with the least stealthy person. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, dear. You're like, right, time to hide. I'm hiding now. <laughs> Stealthing now. <clears throat> Seek a tag. This, this is where I'm going to use that, that inspiration. That inspiration might be a good one. Hey, so do you need to put that in the chat? How? No, no. Uh, no, uh, Rudnell uh, actually oh, sorry, inspired Rudinell's already inspired you. Right, so. right, right, right. All right. So, yeah. Um, and that actually works enough that you're able to... A couple of times, um, Inga's sort of like, oh, just stupid, sneaking around, um, you know, type of thing. But, um, Tani, you're able to kind of um, keep everything 
copacetic Inga, and on the down low, so to speak. No, like Inga and River are together, and Tawny and... Oh, it's uh, Tawny and Bolo, I beg your pardon. Yeah. So I was totally wrong, sorry. Um, yeah. I'll keep Inga's for that then. Bolo, can I have you make a stealth check? Sorry. And River too, I guess, then, while we're at the yeah. subject. Okay, so... So yeah, so um, so Bolo and Tani have no difficulty pretty much making their way. Tani, I like this image of, you know, like, Bolo is kind of like slipping in and out of the shadows and you're like in a very large form trying to do that. Like, sort of like, <laughs> you know, like... Um, like Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, it's like the elephant trying to do <laughs> that, ballet and Fantasia. Or, 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 or uh, Bugs Bunny and Gossamer. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah. To... I was thinking of the elephant, like the ballet off. elephant in Fantasia that's like trying Thanks. to, you know, be yeah. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> no, listen, I'm just saying. <laughs> that's so good. I'm just talking about size. I'm not it's talking about I know. Not ballet talking about girth. Yeah, I was about to say that wasn't an elephant. Was that I couldn't remember what the English word for. Oh, it was a hippo. hippo. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Listen. <laughs> the hippos and the alligators. Hippos are murderous bastards. It's fine. <laughs> um. Okay, so I would say that um, then that uh, Tani and Bolo are able to get to that tunnel without any difficulty and probably slightly before um, the river and Inga because the river um, on several occasions has to be like, okay, look, it's fine. It's, you know, as, as, as uh, Inga is kind of like a stupid, dumb, stealthing dwarf thing, you know, um, and so forth. Um, so I would say that you have just maybe, maybe a minute or so before uh, Inga and the river arrive. Um, and Tani and Bolo, you're now outside this warehouse here, um, by the window, I would gather, the, the kind of boarded yeah. up window. Yeah. Um, and Tani, it looks mostly just like a boarded up, you know, place to you that Bolo was showing you, but. I'll, uh, lift me up if you could. Hinge the thing open. Sort of did that by assuring your job security. <laughs> 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 It's funny. Um, okay, so you're able to open it. Um, it's open enough that it looks like Tani. You will be able to get in the window, though it will be a bit of a, a bit of a fit. Of error. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it looks like you'll be able to do it. So, are you going to follow Bolo in? Sure, I'll Winnie the Pooh this thing. Okay. <laughs> I help yank him through. Yep. He'll be exactly. Um, so, oh, Trent, why did you have to mention that? You know exactly why. Oh my God, I hate. Mention what? What's my name? Oh, really? No. I got it too. That's no. not, you know. No. <laughs> After sigh. the stream, I will tell you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, both of you make it in, and so when Inga and um, uh, when Inga and the River arrive, you do not see um, Bolo or Tawny outside the place. Cool, cool, cool. We'll, we'll be on the lookout for them, though. Okay. If yeah. I see them, I'll go. So you you hear that, all both of you? <laughs> Every cat in Dale comes from. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just um, hordes I, of cats. <laughs> it, uh, just out of curiosity, should we have made perception checks at any point in case, like, looking out for for tails? No. Um, the as you're mo making your way along, you don't see. I guess they could be incredibly well hidden, but nothing that you'd be doing a perception check for to this point. Um, it seems like you have not been followed here. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, everyone's like, do you need a boost? Oh, wait, Inga. Yeah. <laughs> Does she need a boost? Probably not, right? Uh, I'd say she could, yeah, probably not. I think you could probably make it in. Um, and, uh, you can now see as she no kind of... No comment about tossing dwarves. Yeah, exactly. No one tosses a dwarf. So you're able to sort of, you know, uh, ratchet it up enough that you're able to get inside. And now you can see, River, that there is a um, spot behind these boards that uh, leads into the inside of this. It looks like a big deserted warehouse. And Tawny and Bolo are already there um, sort of looking at the um, uh, the barrels, what look like this semicircle of six barrels around this iron crate, set more or less in the center of the floor. So have we, uh, do you want to grab some of these skeins while we're here? Uh, we did grab one earlier. One, last yes. Time, right, yeah. <sighs> thing is, we already got one, but the thing is, the other hand, it wouldn't hurt to have more, but on this hand, it will be very obvious if more than one skein is missing. Will it? There are crates and crates in them. There's, there's barrels? There are barrels only. 
they're just six oh. barrels not uh no crates or anything it's mostly, oh sorry it's fairly sorry. empty here yeah um yeah. yep i just mean that, like barrels. within six barrels it feels like probably you could take a couple without it being obvious but I don't know. well no these are like really big skeins that's the thing like they're like this size right yeah, I mean, and you scale. could you could certainly take two if you wanted to, for sure. You could do that, but the barrels are big enough that you would not be able to take those. Um, right. Those are good size, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, exactly. But the skeins, yeah, you could take a couple. And just uh, like River is kind of looking to Tawny to see like whatever might be useful to uh, to him. Um, I mean, River River's sense of uh, of of how Tawny is going to make this antidote is very much uh, kind of sympathetic magic thing. Like, surely if you have element of bad thing you will make it into element of good thing by magic because that's just how it's gonna work yeah um so anyway uh so so river looks at this uh grate in the floor then um is it something that it like she could shimmy her way into you'd have to pull it up um inga has, has mentions that um maybe with a touch of smugness i don't know inga that you've done this before <laughs> um <laughs> because where bolo was like i could have done that if i tried harder um but, oh yeah that's right um but you were able to pull the grate up it's not locked but it is a little heavy so you'd have to you have to pull it up over it but then you can see even from where you are that there is a ladder at the very top of it that then descends into darkness And this is where it comes up. Who has dark vision? <laughs> Just thinking that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is I. And nobody else, I think. Um, yeah. So, um, do I see anything down there? Um, you can see that the ladder probably descends a, actually a pretty good distance, maybe 75, 100 feet even, um, at which point your vision kind of, you know, fades not because of the dark vision but because you know you can only see so far down below into the darkness but it um it does look like there is you think you can see the sort of um ground kind of like a dirt ground at the bottom of this ladder but it's a pretty decent distance down you know this ladder to get into the down this grate if i climb down it will it play the snake eater theme but backwards uh, right exactly <laughs> and you'll hear that, that clank, clank, clank 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 yeah mm. <laughs> Um, so the guys are not here yet, right? No, they were there ahead of us. Oh. Yep. So, but they're um, not in the room? Now I'm confused. No, they were in the room. You you were just were outside the building. Now that you're in, you can see Tani. I mentioned uh, that Tani and Bolo were looking down at the crate. Yeah. Uh, at the uh, grate, uh, sorry. This yes, is what yes, I was saying. So, so basically, like, okay, so our... We're, we're going to go down this tunnel. We're going to see where it goes. But... Um, that looks quite long and deep for, I actually, I'm, I'm, I don't know if stone has come in <laughs> with us or not. I still don't have a yeah. sense of like how, okay, cool. Yeah, I would say so. The, the, okay. you, you probably, if you hold the window, like the boards open, um, mm -hmm. then you probably think that stone could probably jump up. Jump in. You think into it. It's not, yeah, it's not like 20 feet above the ground or anything. Great, so, great, great. yeah. So, um, <sighs> Laura, Laura so cute so vicious mm -hmm. and cute very cute oh. <laughs> um so yeah so just uh so like river is going to say now they're in a place that is actually abandoned so do we all want to go down here together i i can probably carry stone down around my shoulders or something but i still feel like i i just don't know i don't know what to expect of this i don't know whether it's better to have you go meet Brindle since she knows you and knows to expect you somehow, or to just all go into the darkness together? I... Brindle didn't give me a way to get a hold of her, so I could go back to their to their hideout. Uh, but when they're out and about now, um, I'd just be relying on them finding me. Right. I'd say let's go in. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather stay together and, and check it out together. Yeah, let me go down first and light a torch when I'm down there. So All that right. you guys can see. Alright. Um, Alright, I'll bring up the rear in that case. Okay. So, all of you descend into this, um, into the bottom of this grate. Uh, into <laughs> <laughs> the bottom of this grate, this ladder. <laughs> end of the tunnel and the thing you notice when you get down there is 
um, that fairly obviously, without even having to make a check, you can see that there are definitely footprints that, um, really boot prints, that are sort of many of them going back and forth um, along the sort of dirt of the floor, um, back and forth to the base of the ladder that you were at the bottom of, um, and sort of extending to the tunnel. And the tunnel itself seems to curve a little bit and then slopes up. It's actually pretty damp down here. You can see even the walls themselves, if you sort of touch them, um, they are um, themselves sort of dirt, but they feel a little, not muddy, but, but a little moist almost maybe. Um, and you can see that the tunnel floor begins to slope up, not steeply, but fairly, you know, fairly rapidly the, the uh, slope begins to slope upwards. Um, and it is a tunnel that is Roughly about, um, oh, I would say maybe six to seven feet, not very big. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe eight feet, I guess, um, circle to circular, uh, more or less roughly hewn through here, um, and seems to proceed upward. And if you're basing things on what you would assume is the right direction, Inga, probably northeast-ish. So if you're starting, uh, let me freehand it, if you're starting here, like, in that direction. River's uh, gonna ask Inga as they're walking and as she's looking around at the stone, she goes, Inga, can you tell how old these tunnels are? Can I? Um, yes, I would say so. Um, they are not that old. Um, you would guess that these tunnels, that this tunnel was probably a few years old. It's not, it's not days old though. But um, it's pro or months old, but not very old. Again, maybe a few years, and it's rough. Like it's not great. This is definitely not dwarven construction for sure. <laughs> um, the the kind of tunnels narrows at times and expands at times. There's a couple places where some of the wall seems to have not caved in, but seems like a little bit not perfectly smoothed out, and it does not seem particularly well maintained. But it does seem well used. A lot of sort of back and forth traffic. And it looks like. Broken Stones had a smuggling prob a problem for some time. Yep. It's very much what considering, it feels like. Considering, well, I mean, it can't be for that long, considering for that the town has only been inhabited for five uh, years now, but... Was it? Right? I, oh. Inhabited? Like, they were, like, no. completely abandoned while Smaug was still around, right? Well, no, 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 no. Um, Dale was not completely abandoned. Um, the areas of it were... There were some that would, like, live in these places. When they rebuilt Dale, they never built it up very high because of the dragon, because they were always, mm. like... But actually, ironically, Broken Stone, although it did get, you know, destroyed also when the dragon did its, you know, in depredations, because of that, it almost was sort of more functional, you know, than other parts of the city that relied more on it. Like, they were always used to having rundown buildings, if you know what I mean. So, right. um, yeah, so there would have been a few. But it was definitely not, I mean, but it was not a real functional city in the way that we typically think of it, though. I mean... But also the, I mean, isn't it, isn't it now, like, like, five years after? Like, how long is. after the yeah, Battle of Five it's five years. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. In fact, exactly. even a little bit longer than that now. Probably more like six years or so, I would say. So, I mean, um, it would make sense to me that... Yeah. Yeah, like, as <clears throat> Dale is being rebuilt, that somebody might have... Some enterprising group might have um, taken advantage of chaos or materials or safety to um, build these tunnels and uh, make use of them. Mm. But, Um. While you while you do that, I'm gonna buy a break. <laughs> Mark. Mm. Tab some. Come on, if you're handing out money, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Step one in getting money from me: first, be my daughter. Secondly, mm. okay, uh, but I mean, <laughs> it's okay. Okay, a uh, little larve is uh, going to take a walk and get some food. Okay. Um, so, uh, right, so you continue to make your way, did, I'm sorry, did anyone ask me anything while I was quickly attending to that? Um, no. okay. So, um, I'm going to bring you all to, you'll be happy to hear, oh. another map. That's right, oh, oh. time has come. Roll for initiative! For another map. Let's go. Um, it's called the Roll for Initiative map. Um, okay. All right, and as always, I will ask everybody, please, to ignore the large numbers which are not, in fact, uh, 
do not exist in reality, but... No points of interest here. Exactly. Um, so this is the uh, sort of end of wow, the tunnel. Glitchy as hell. I guess might be the way to describe it. Um, and uh, this tunnel leads um, continually up and around um, and uh, takes a sort of prominent bend up here to the north. Um, and then continues to move to the east. So, um, given that the tunnel is about roughly six to seven feet, as I said, maybe eight, um, there might be room for two people to go, you know, side by side, but not more than that. So, is there somebody taking the, is it Inga taking the lead because of the, the dark vision? Um, or not? Rem yeah, well, probably. remembering that when you light a torch, actually, your dark vision is going to be... No, like she would hand off the torch to somebody To someone in the back, her. okay. All right. Yeah. So then, yeah, so I guess Inga's in the front. Is that... Is that like, such as, like that? Okay, and then um, can I have the um, ev uh, Brad and uh, Mal? Can I have you bring your tokens on also? Um, would you mind have? turning off the map grid for this? Or oh yeah, sure. Um, you should be able to just take your character sheet, I think, Brad, and just drag it onto the map, and your token should appear there if the token uh, is associated with it, which I think it is. Yeah, yeah. there you are. <laughs> That's to scale, by the way. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, let me fix that grid problem let me fix that grid problem yep, still locked to grid um uh, so now hold down alt while you're positioning your yeah although i'll fix that in a minute oh i did not know that was possible thank you there we go i think i think it's now fixed it should be right yes okay good Lovely. Okay, so, um, yeah, so everyone position themselves where you think you are. I assume you're bringing stone, although tell me if you're not. You are going to have to, yes. like, Tawny or someone would have to stand at the bottom and basically just have stone, yeah. you know, Princess Bride, leap of faith into the arms below. I, uh, I was imagining, actually, that she'd, like, you know, sling um, uh, stone over someone's shoulder. Oh, she could do that, too. And goes, yeah. Come on, back, yeah. back. Yeah, yeah exactly. she could, she could do that. Up. Exactly. <laughs> I would say she could do that. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got Inga up front. We've got River in second. Uh, we got Bolo and Tani back there. Where is Stone? Like with you, uh, right, right next to you, or uh, scouting ahead? I'm yeah, I'm imagining. Uh, or, I mean, unless is there any value to him? Sniffing? There's only one way to go, really, right? Until they until right. they get so to any kind of fork. So, uh, so yeah. So Stone may as well stay at the back. My my sense was that if she's bringing up the rear, then if anyone comes up behind them or something like that, then okay, uh, it's up to you. So. But um, no, this. But no, but be aware though. This this is where you came from, so you're heading this way. You're heading yeah, to yeah. the east. Okay. Exactly. Because right so now he's ahead of you, so I just didn't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to go over here. Got it. Okay. All right. So um, you all make your way until. Uh, let's see if I got that. Nope. That's what was these weird things. lines there? Yeah. Brad's uh, accidentally drawing. That's them. me oh. trying to like delete them. Like, uh, <laughs> click on them and then like click uh, delete on your keyboard. I got it. <laughs> that was funny though. I was like, you see some weird looking lines. I should have just left it there. <laughs> really spiders, ah. Exactly. Okay. Um, so you continue along until um, you arrive at uh, this spot here. And I'm going to move this a little further. It ends at what looks like basically um, a dead entrance, a dead end, except that right above you, there is, um, you can see there is a, a rough wooden ladder that is on the wall, uh, the far wall of the tunnel that goes up and there is a probably five, maybe six foot square, probably five foot square trap door, um, which is right above you uh, on the ladder. How, how long have we been walking? I would say probably maybe about five minutes um, and always it was sloping up so that the soil got less and less moist until you're now it's just sort of dry and dirty and dusty. Um, you but think it was northeast. Yes, um, northeast. About five minutes to the northeast. Right below the hideout. Mm -hmm. Like checking if I have like anything as it were for orienting myself underground but i don't see anything mm, nope no i don't that's weird um Are we... so there's a ladder that goes up correct or down? and ends at okay. this like trap door above you in the ceiling 
Okay, um, in that case, I would like to start climbing up and put my door, uh, my door, my ear against the door and use my, um, what's it called? Natural, no, wait, Room of the Earth ability, there. Oh, okay. Like um, the Aragorn thing. Okay, let me think about whether Room of the Earth... Do you want me to copy it for you? To yeah, do me a favor so I don't have to look in the book for it. Uh, wait, so I wrote down here, stuff through the earth, DC 15 survival check, success equals useful information. So this is actually If not... I roll a 25 plus, then I get near miraculous information, and it is on page 38. Do you want to just, so you could put your ear to the earth, but not the door, because the door is literally, that's a perception check, that's, that's a man-made property, and it's not associated, like it's associated with whatever's above you. So, oh. yeah. Oh, okay. No, then I'm just gonna. But a perception like, check you can absolutely listen. make. Shen, I just will regularly listen in. Why don't Why don't you do that and then just like um, River can uh, listen at the, at the thing. Unnatural twenty. Um, there is um above. So as you as you sort of listen, um, you can hear maybe a faint murmur of what might be voices but it's very very hard to hear and it definitely is not right next to the trap door but you think maybe you hear almost like you know if you ever put your ear to the door and you heard like vibrations of someone speaking like somewhere else in the house like that type of thing it doesn't seem like it's someone that's right right there but okay. definitely a murmur of voices um i want to gently push against the trap door to see if there's any um like lock keeping it down there is not like and the trap door opens up. Um, no, 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 no! Slowly. I don't want to fully open it up. No, I know, like, I, I know, I know, I know. Just, but just faintly though, right? A little bit. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't do that. Um, so you just a little bit, and you can sort of look out, and you can see that there is. This is a lit room, um, and all you see, right, like without without opening it much, is basically just like what looks like the bottom of a shelf. Um, and it looks like there is some possibly like, possibly like, um, what do they call these? Um, mead, uh, like not, not containers of mead, but like these um, huge bottles, I guess. Yes. I'm trying to think of these like. Um, Emmy Johns. Yeah, there you go. No what? wonder I couldn't think of it. Like that's a word that the, I use every day. The big, like, yeah, there are very big bottles of that kind of. That's kind of a exactly Demi what John. I was talking what, what about. What are yeah. they called? Demi John. I'll show you. Demi John. Like I said, French or something. Uh, I, 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 I only, I've actually first encountered them in the UK, um, and they, uh, Demi, look Demi right. John. Yes. Oh, also, also called, called a carboy. Bottles in German. <laughs> also oh. called a carboy. A carboy, okay. So Demi uh, Johns and carboy. Big old bottles, like. Um, okay. So yes, you see a couple of those, um, and, uh, that's pretty much Glass it. Glass ballon. Um, at the bottom of this, uh, the bottom of this shelf, but that's as much as you can see. Um, you also don't hear, the voices are a little bit louder when you open the trap door, but they're definitely not in this room. Um, maybe a room next door. Um, is there light in the room? There Where is light in the room. Out? Yes. Yeah. A couple of tor- there are a couple of, uh, torches set in sconces on the wall. Um, okay, um, so I... Gently and quietly close the door back up and gonna whisperly inform my companions about what I've seen. All right, well, I guess we'll pass it back along the tunnel all the way back to the beginning. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Am I we to... found what? a room. <laughs> Why are you still there, Tony? You Tani? found a tooth? What? Because I was bringing up the rear. I was waiting for you to move. I was bringing up the rear. I said that. Anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so, River is like, well, can't imagine what else they would have in glass bottles but the thing that we're looking for. Um. Shall we? Okay. Um, yeah, Tony, I guess I... Think, I... Oh, I was going to say, Tony, I think that your priority when we get up there is just to get some of whatever is in those bottles. Um, we don't know how 
rowdy we're going to be, I suppose, once we get up there. Did the, um, the, those barrels of skines, did they have a particular scent with, with so much concentration of that poison? No, I would say not. Um, the that poison was, okay. itself was a little odd in that it is sort of infused or the thread is infused with it but it doesn't it's not soaking you know it's almost like yeah it's okay. it may it may have already dried basically into whatever this sure. is so yeah okay so are we up in the room not yet off? i'm I was, yeah so that's so i guess inga like quietly opens up the door and gets up there and like keeps her x ready while okay the guys are climbing up behind her. So you find yourself in what you would guess is some kind of, has to be a storeroom, basically. Um, it's not super large, uh, I think. Are our tokens too big? Is that what's happening here? Well, I could reduce them a little bit here. Because I'm assuming those are shelves, right? Yes, those are. I mean, you're look as the heroes of Dale. You are more. We're larger, larger than larger. life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I sneak up to the door and like keep watch. I guess. Okay. Uh, let me just yeah change your size a little bit there. Uh, okay, good. Um, there we go. I think that's right. Um, so uh, in this place, this um, is definitely some kind of storage room. I'll talk about that door in a minute, uh, Inga filled with rotten and cracked wooden barrels. Um, there is a tipped over shelf of what you can see now is wine jugs. And now that you can actually see the bottom of it, you think it's probably likely that a lot of what you're talking about, uh, what a lot of the stuff is not actually here, or at least it's not here at the moment. Um, that there's, that none of this stuff seems to have, it doesn't seem worthy like being, you know, capable of holding anything at the moment. Mostly it just seems to be cracked and fallen apart basically. Um, and there are, as I said, these torches with sconces on the wall. But as you open, uh, as you come to this to look out here, Inga, you can now see a much larger room up here. And now you can get a sense of where the murmur was coming from because murmur of voices. Because what this looks like is basically a sleeping quarters. There we go. Um, is basically a sleeping quarters of some kind. Um, there are um, a number of tables. There's one big long table, and there are some smaller tables here, but there are also, like one here, and then there's a couple of small, tiny little tables, but there are also bedrolls that are laid out on the floor, and right now there are at least six um, not particularly uh, nice-looking people um, that are snoring and, uh, kind of with their, you know, arms flung wide and so forth. Um, guarding does not seem to be a big part of what's happening with this group anyway. Um, but there are 12 bedroll, bedrolls and you only see six right now. So, for what that's worth. Uh, yeah, I, like, signal to the guys, like, so, like, pointing in the room that there is a giant in there. <laughs> uh, then, like, show up six fingers and make, like, a mm. sleeping hand motion. So, so just to clarify, there's the the demijohns and things that Inga saw at first when she was peeking up, did they or did they not have liquid in them? They do not have liquid in them. They seem to be dry. They seem to have been, oh. at some point they did, but not now. Okay. And there's only a few of them that are intact. Most of them are broken. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Is there residue uh, inside them? You could you could check that, um, but you would have to open them up to basically look. Um, oh, they're not, uh, they're not clear? They're not no, glass. they're not clear. Um, okay. They have some kind of opaque. They're opaque. I mean, like, you can you can see, like, you can see enough to see that there's no liquid inside them, but as to whether there's a residue, you'd have to open yeah. up there. Each one is uh, sealed by a cork. The ones that are still intact have corks yeah. on the top of them. I will do that. I'll just take a, a moment to... Okay. Uh, very carefully, so that it doesn't go squeak. Yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> right. Um, okay. When you when you pop it open, um, there is uh, there's definitely a whiff of something, um, and uh, but it seems like mostly stale air. In fact, it seems like mm -hmm. probably a long time since this thing has actually contained uh, contained any kind of liquid. Okay. Uh... Inga sneaks back to Tony and whispers to him, uh, hey, do you have anything to um, 
like um, keep these people in their sleep. You know, fantasy chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> Just waft some lavender towards them. Yeah. <laughs> ah, <it's> so calming. <laughs> I take out my Adam <laughs> Yeah. Person B is at the by the bedside. Valerian would work, but they would have to ingest it. Okay, so I guess not. Gonna have to be quiet then. We could snitch one of them and um, interrogate him. Um, suddenly all of you can hear from the room without a check, you hear this huh, ha, and then you hear a thunk, thunk and then ha, ah, come on you dog huh, thunk, and you hear this like sound of someone, maybe a couple of people, sort of grunting and then the sounds of um, something thunking into wood so and probably this is people com doing combat training coming from somewhere <laughs> over here but definitely not in that room but from somewhere nearby it oh is that could that be um brindle attacking do we, does it do sound hear? angry no does everybody hear? well i guess it does but it doesn't sound panicked or anything no okay no so this is not fighting is it male or female um i would say make a perception check for me I, can I also make a perception sure. check? Yeah. Yeah, to see whether you can tell. Yeah. Boy, are we all perceptive yeah. today? Definitely people there, Bolo. No, no <laughs> question. And the river, you've also heard people. Oh God! And for I sure, heard, they are I people heard grunting. The sound of people. Definitely uh, not a dog. Know? Not a dog. Not a bear. Definitely a person. Can Can I also have a perception check? Sure, say, uh, if you want. Oh god, this is the last one of the month too. Ah, I, can I just really give you? 15. Can I give you uh, inspiration on that? <laughs> no, save it. I can't. There's not. We're not gonna. We're gonna end so soon. We have twenty six minutes. No, 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 no. No, we don't. Oh. We're ending in a in a minute or two. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Tony gets that then. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to use? Well, it depends. Do you want to have have Tony do his perception and then use that? I'll allow you to use that on, on that one if you want, Inga. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Actually, uh, give that to Inga, and she's going to try and sneak in there to snitch one of them. Oh, okay. Let's have Tani make his check if he wants to do one, and then we'll have uh, Inga do that. That'll be a good... I have an do... idea for how to... Yeah. Just also, do we have a sense of how much time has passed? Ooh, 22. Like, nice. Since when? Um, since when? Since, uh, like, the dawn how... of the universe. How far are we off of the agreed time for Brindle to attack? Close. Probably 15 minutes to 25. 15 to 25 minutes, probably. Pretty close. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you think it is a mix, Tani, of it's probably three or so, if you had to guess, um, people. And it definitely sounds like maybe a couple of men and a woman or like there's a couple of high, there's a couple of lower voices, one higher voice. Um, you would guess. And they, again, don't sound panicked. It does sound like, because you hear this, huh, and then a thunk a second later, so it does sound like a pretty good guess that it's some kind of training probably going on. Oh, I'm doing guess. judo. Um, or something. And um, so, Inga, where are you sneaking into? Could end the year in a uh, kidnapping. I so, want to get this guy. Okay. So you're going to go in, and what do you want to do in, when you say get him? Sne sneak in here. Okay. Over here. Um... And basically, like, use one hand to keep his mouth shut so that he can't scream. Okay. And grab him with the other arm and drag him back into this room. Basically. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to ask you to... Does it sound like something that I can do sneakily? That is a question. I mean... Part, so it sounds great, and I want you to do it. It is. Yeah, of course great. you do, because you are the and I want you to do it, but also I find myself going, wait, there are six of them sleeping. There are four of us. Could we not all just go in and knock them out so that they are not sleeping but actually unconscious is that maybe not i don't know because if we did if we did that we'd still have two to choose from in terms of interrogating isn't it like more likely though that they would just wake up from being knocked over the head 
I no, but it does mean that you'd all have I, to I make stealth have checks. I don't have experience <laughs> with knocking people out while they are asleep. Okay. Bull has a cast iron pan on him. No, he doesn't. Uh, no, he doesn't. Uh, Flank Sierra okay, is in. Brindle. Yeah, Brindle. Oh, Hulk, that's man. right. Oh, you left it. Well, the quest for Flank Sierra. Or right? Flank Sierra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, well, I don't know. I feel. I feel. I feel like we could probably knock them out. Probably. I mean, they're 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 prone. Yes, it's, and asleep, from well, what you can tell. There's six chances of one of them waking up and screaming for the other ones to come in the room and help them, though. I mean, we're going to fight eventually anyway, but we could knock out potentially four people uh, before we do that. Okay, then let's do the uh, ring wraith thing where we like all stand next to. A bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so so a stone is by the door like Barlamin <laughs> in the film, like but, you know. Like, like, I, like, I, I, I said. I suggest this as a path of action, if, but I also am very keen on Inga's plan of like grabbing someone. I just feel like I could do either... both, by the way. You could have one, have her pull one and have five left. You could do this. That's true. Wished. Yeah. Okay, then let's go knock him out and I guess grab the last one for interrogation. Well, are you, st well, so are you starting with that one or are you all going in at once? Are you starting with that one, Inga, and then doing this other plan next? Like going in to get um... the rest or not? Um, 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 I don't know. What should I do with the sun? I like the idea of positioning as, as ring wraith and okay. just kind of like on three all going to knock them out. Okay. Are there like large black blankets in this room store? That yeah, that would be pretty to, like, funny. Dress up as it's ring like a wraith. reverse, reverse film. Uh, okay, so I'm going to ask all of you to, and I'm assuming Stone is going to stay behind and not do that, right? Yeah. Although yeah. I do have this image of Stone like waiting like with his paw or one of them, but no. Yeah. Um, he's, he's got a blackjack in his mouth. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like, you know, no one could rip someone's throat out, but the River does oh. not like the idea of actually murdering people in their sleep. Yeah, just, yeah. He's just, like, yeah. knocking them out. Yeah. Let me have everybody make stealth checks, please, as you make your way over. This is gonna All right, fun. now I have inspiration. Yes, does, Chad, if you want to inspire people in addition to oh, like, you, you know. Oh, you better do it now. Yeah, now yeah. is the time to inspire <laughs> if you're going to do yeah. that. Last um, of December, last of the year. It's for us. last of 2020. It's true. Last of 2020. Last of 2020. Going out with literal bangs on people's heads. <laughs> uh, so, and which of you? Oh yeah, that's like... because New Year's fireworks are canceled. That's right. Uh... So, Bolo, very good at stealth. Which of you has the lowest stealth situation? Tony All right, me. Tanya, I inspire you with, and so. Uh, okay. I Remind have two again. inspirations, so who else needs... Oh, yeah, so oh. We'll actually don't inspire somebody else, Amal, because um, okay. he's already has inspiration. No, 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 no. I have two. Oh, that's right. You have two, have you two to use. Get. That's right. I forgot oh. about that. That's what right. Trent does. I would also like one. Um, <laughs> okay, then I will inspire you. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm inspiring uh, um, Tani. So, Tani's inspired. Uh, uh, Brett, how much... Uh, what's your bonus on stealth rolls? Seven. Okay, Echo's okay, inspired the river. Like have... So oh, okay. I'm gonna, so I'm we gonna all get one. <laughs> so I'm gonna move there. Yeah. So basically, what it means is everybody got one. Is, is what okay, I'm saying okay, here. Cool. Also, if you have left over, I mean, we have to do the stealth check, but then we also have to knock them out. So <laughs> yeah, let's be... let's start with let's, the stealth check first. We'll parcel okay, them so out. I use my inspiration for this roll. All right, let's do it. So a lot... Yes, I needed that. It's a good that. thing you needed it. <laughs> yep. All right, twenty-one. I assume everyone's using their inspiration on this stealth. Yes. Um, Bolo is fine. I wait for the double ones from Tani. <laughs> mm, bye. 20. 20. No, you're natural. like, you're like, like okay. a whisper of wind. I guess you've been watching Bolo and like, <laughs> without admitting it. All oh, right. That just even. leaves, um, that leaves. Oh, no, it's everybody. Okay. Yeah. So yes, you all make your way over, um, to one of the people. Just let me know where you're going, Bolo and uh, River, which ones of these on the map you're doing. Right. Um... Well, I don't know, I guess. Uh, like somebody, like take this one next to the door and this okay. one down oh. here. Is I'll that door, door closed? I'll go no, here. they are not. Oh. The, these doors are not closed. Okay. Well, because, okay. like, in case this one wakes up, he will be the first one to run out, basically. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. Now, what I'm going to do I is I'm going to oh. ask everybody to make just a, essentially, what is a basic attack. So just, uh, just your strength. Um, plus, um, your proficiency, but there won't be any, like, uh, you know, additions for weapons or anything like that, because you're all just trying to knock them out with, like, the butt of your weapon or the staff or whatever. So it's just going to so be... So a strength check plus proficiency. Plus proficiency, yes. yes. And everyone's and going to do a, that. A 
dex check plus proficiency? <laughs> no, strength. Has to be strength on this one. You're trying to do it in such a way that you can um, hit them and knock them out somewhat, but not too much. And that's not dexterity. That's nice. strength control. Okay. Um, that is a 24. Sorry. Thank you very much. All right. So 24. I'm very excited to talk about Bolo's in a minute. But, um, oh, God. Bolo's I kill him. Super excited. All right. Um, <laughs> let me go with... Uh, we have Inga's, the 21. Oh, so I dear. need the river and I need... I, I have an attack called barehanded. Oh, wait that's a fine. second. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, wait, Inga, Inga and River get two attacks. Can we do two people? <laughs> no. They're not next to each other for one thing. Can we do well, two tries on one person if we don't get it in the first shot? Uh, <laughs> two tries on one person, no, because if you miss the one time, they're going to wake up and they might make a sound. Let's worry about if you hit the first time before we talk okay. about the second one. Uh, Tani, well, I love how Tani's just like, like he just Bruce Lee's it completely. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you actually like handed. smash his skull in love two. It. You're like, oh, sorry. I, oh, no, All just right. kidding. Uh, does anyone want to inspire the river again uh, for the strength check, which she is not actually good at? I was, I thought she could use a dex check for her weapon, sorry. which is usually what she does. But I Yeah, would. but no, not in this case. This, this is, yeah. Uh, anyone? Uh, just if anyone has inspirations uh, going spare that they don't want to. Uh, did I use both in the last thing? I think you used one. I think you used one because Echo yeah, had one in there too. Echo, yeah, okay. So, so yeah, you can use your last one. one. So Ooh. save it, Echo. You got the last one's fine. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, so, so sorry. Strength check plus proficiency bonus, which is three. So it's uh, it's a, yeah, it's basically an attack. So it's just strength plus proficiency. So yes, it would be strength check the equivalent. Uh, so just roll strength. Allah. Oh, you needed that. Wow, boy, you needed it, for sure. Okay, so all of those, so with one practiced motion, Tani's like, ka -chaw! River's like, wow! Uh, you know, and Inga's like, ka -chaw! And then from and one Bolo's corner like... of the room, yeah, exactly. So Bolo just like, like hits him on the what wrist. What I thought was the guy's head was actually his ass. He was like turned around in the, in the bed. <laughs> so he's just, huh! And he stands up. So you all turn around with your knocked out people. And the one guy's like, Oi! What the hell are you doing? Oi! And there's this big yell. And from the other room, you hear, What? And that is where we're going to bring 2020 <laughs> to Amazing. an awesome close. I'm so Amazing. excited. So excited. Oh my god. Bolo. <laughs> I just love how all of you were like, Hucha! And you're like, <laughs> like I like the idea too that it was Bolo, just as good, but on his ass. Like it was perfect, right. but just on his ass. I, I will admit that after all of our like circumspect thoughts about how we were gonna approach this little hideout, yeah. that River is the one that said, "Go in and let's clock him on the head." <laughs> I mean, I honestly, here the thing is. It would have worked without you, damn kids. We absolutely should not have had Bolo doing this action. In retrospect, that was probably a mistake. However, <laughs> I mean, it literally, it actually was a mistake. I mean, see his role. So, flanks here. We would have won the day. It is flanks here. This is the problem. Oh my goodness. Actually, I think actually, it's occurring to me now that probably in River's head is like, he's got a cast iron pan. How could he possibly miss? <laughs> And, and it cuts over know. to Brindle fingering flank searer, like, like sort of putting it over her shoulder while she waits for you. Well, listen, maybe it's fine and maybe the attack will happen soon. Um, but in any case, I'm super excited to see what happens in 2021. Um, I'm going to start with Amal at the bottom of the column, as always. Uh, always a pleasure, Amal. How did you feel about today? Where would the lovely folks find you next? I think it was really great fun. Um, I also, I, I, I particularly enjoyed, like, the, the chat with like just the the dynamics of um the both the conversation with lavas and with tony at the uh the at, um the battered mug thank you um because it is a new and interesting situation to be dealing with like social inequity <laughs> within middle yeah. earth yeah um and it's actually really cool in particular to me because i've been teaching a fantasy myth and language course this term and one of the things that we've been discussing in a lot of the books is what, how dragons function in fantasy mm -hmm. and how um, dragons tend to be a way of talking about accumulation of capital and like social inequity and stuff like that. And right. specifically, excuse me, in um, 
in Naomi Mitchison's Travel Light, a book which I super love and cannot stop recommending to people, um, the like there's a whole you know sort of satirical thing with dragons where dragons teach economics uh, and like about how how horrible heroes are specifically because they give wealth away uh, when the natural good order of things involves hoarding wealth as a dragon does. And there's a whole like comparison there with um, with the uh, the emperor of Byzantium and stuff. So like there's all these parallels between like, yeah, the, the dragons basically think anyone who hoards wealth is a dragon also. And when they're not, so I just thought there's like a lot of really cool resonance there. Um, and I, I really got enjoyed getting the chance to explore that. And, and also a little bit just like, just like River is, is the only one of the group who is not titled, who is not actually like, um, who doesn't have experience of wealth particularly uh like her literally in the game book it's like from a frugal background you know and stuff mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so um so i i liked the opportunity to like um just put put that forward too uh but anyways i thought I was delighted i was delighted with all of the, the there was like humor there was seriousness there was bolo <laughs> um, so oh, I, I think it's yeah, it's very, very, very fun. Uh, I, I think a fine way to see out, see out the year, um, and so on. Yeah, where people can find me uh, on the internet. <laughs> um, I'm for my sins on Twitter at Tith and I. Uh, I have a Substack newsletter at amal.substack.com, um, and uh, a website at amalimhatad.com. Um, so basically those those places uh, and uh, that's it so yeah happy holidays and happy new year to everyone thank you very much Amal same um, uh, thank you for a great year of play here and everything else and for the wonderful writing as always uh, yeah I, I was going to mention quickly that one thing that Tolkien really does not get touched on that much in Tolkien is sort of the city experience you know, especially in Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings you have Minas Tirith and you have Bree but that's really not it doesn't count you know a kind of good sized city where you really think about things like inequity that that doesn't come up very much it's just not part of his focus and so i've always thought it'd be interesting to look a little bit about that because you know what happens to the people that are not you know living in in the same pleasant you know wonderful marble palaces of some of the other ones so anyway yeah, yeah. um but uh yeah it was always a pleasure so thank you thank you so much and uh Thank you as well to uh, Terry, who did uh, good stuff today with Inga. Got a lot of chance to do a little bit of underground sort of, uh, you know, maneuvering, so to speak. And then um, also, you know, making one's way up to taking people out until the, you know, the, the Bolo situation happened um, and such. How'd you feel about today? Where would lovely people find you next? Oh, uh, today was a lot of fun. I mean, it's always is, but, you know. Ah, need fun right now. Fun, fun, is, fun is a good thing. Fun, fun is fun. a good thing. Yes. Um, so yeah, good, good stuff. <laughs> uh, um, not not super talkative. Um, yeah, where will people see me? Uh, yeah, I'm still like we are like halfway through uh, Herald December right now, which like a lot of people are actually participating in, which is yeah. Great. I've been looking at some of those. It's been great. Yeah. Um, got like some people who have never hand drawn before to participate in it and they are like practicing drawing now which is awesome awesome which is what i try to get people to do <laughs> because like a big thing with like um people who are interested in heraldry online like they often just rely on assets that they find online and then like photoshop together different pieces to make mm -hmm. new coats of arms and stuff like that and I ain't here for that, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I mean, yes, you can also participate by doing that, but only the people who hand draw will be entered into the raffle on January 1st to win a free emblazonment by me, so <laughs> they all do that. Um, but yeah, uh, people can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. At Tari Tunes, where you can see my heraldic shenanigans currently. Like, usually I draw other stuff too, but that's like what I've been up to mainly lately. Yeah, you need to do I that. I did draw Rapunzel from Disney's Tangled. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I was going to say, people need to do that so they can do the heraldry so that um, yes. Terry can then focus on coloring in Bolo. Um, and we oh, can yes. get the full Bolo yes, picture yes, yes. so that we can do that and then pull the new, the new crew. 
so we can sell more shirts with the oh, new yeah. crew. That's let's think about marketing and branding. All right, let's think of it. No, um, but in all seriousness, it's always a pleasure. And thanks as well to Terry uh, this year for doing such amazing stuff with the game book illustration streams and all that stuff too. So thank you, Terry. It's been uh, uh, for all of how terrible 2020 has been. It's been a good oh, yes. year for that. So thank you for being a part of part of that and um, yeah, and for doing such a good job with play with Inga as well. Yes, and I wish everybody also uh, happy Hawks Watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah. one, the one holiday we can all celebrate. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, also I hope you all have, a, as we say over here, a good slip into the new year. Um, so uh, because you know the ice get uh, the, the the roads get icy, so <laughs> yeah, no, sure. you tend to slip on the roads a lot. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, and aside from that, uh, let's hope next year will be better. I want to say it can only be, but yeah, let's, say, let's, really let's not uh, push our luck. So uh, yeah. yes, let's hope it will be a year. Let's, it will. Be, let's hope it'll be a year. That <laughs> we can all get by. A year that is like one year long. Just one year long. Yeah, 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 yeah. like this Post year was 40. like way too not long. Not 300 days of March exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, thank you, Terry, as always. Um, also, thank you to uh, Brad, who joined us for the first time this year um, with Bolo, and who has uh, completely, like, seriously fit in immediately um, with the character and with the play, as I knew that he would, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, Brad, uh, that was, it was fun to, <laughs> I'm really so happy. I mean, not, it could have been anybody, but I think it's great that it was Bolo in that respect, because the thing is, Bolo has not, Bolo is not a goofball like he hasn't established him that way he's just kind of quirky in the way that he does certain things but has been very effective but it was just fun to see of all of the ones that I'm like didn't quite get the knockout punch down it was funny that, that Bolo ended up being that way and of course Bolo also had to you know watch people not being the cook that he was so there's also that going on um how'd yeah. you feel about today where would the lovely folks find you yeah next? I, was just, I was just gonna say why did i get the impression that you were hoping i was going to fail that role as much as i was hoping tani would fail his cooking <laughs> <laughs> I, either one would be great yeah well that's right see <laughs> But both, we got both this session. I'm okay. tempted to bring up karma, <laughs> my friend. But I, think, you know. I get to I, rub that in to Tommy Bear for the rest 100%, of the time. 100% I'm expecting River to, like, when beyond this adventure, just be like, you know, I, I really feel like you need more direct contests between you to cook delicious food. I will volunteer <laughs> as judge and you can just keep on doing this and then just kind of continue to eat that would be the, food. <laughs> that would be the perfect villa episode, you know, like always like with TV shows when you have like the villa episode where like the characters go like off to like doing some random, random shit thing. that has nothing to do with the plot. Like, you know, like a cooking contest sounds perfect. There you go. Yes. Yeah, for, a, for a filler episode, yes. <laughs> yes! Ah, yes! yes! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> not a, not a Polo. feeder episode, but a, a filler oh, episode. Okay. But yes, that's good. Polo can say stuff like, "Well, at least you didn't fail as badly as you did at the the battered mug." <laughs> like, oh. just be able to bring that up all the time. I haven't you were seen supposed a... to batter his mug. I haven't you critically can... failed since a battered mug incident, right, Tony? How are they? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was a good session. Um, folks can find me on um, Twitter at bbolier. Um, Instagram, Bradley P. Bowyer, and the same on Facebook. Uh, I run a Patreon as well. Um, uh, that uh, I, I focus a lot on talking about writing tips. I do share some of my fiction as well, but I actually, I actually try to um, take a look at the inside scoop. Um, I share artwork early uh, as it comes in, and like uh, as I develop, say, catalog copy for a book. You know, so a, few, a query letter type stuff I talk about. So. If people are kind of interested in that kind of thing, uh, check that out. Um, and otherwise, we'll see each other again next year. Uh, happy holidays, everyone, and thanks for the, the great session so far. Um, that's, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I am also excited. Every time I say next year, I'm like, wow, already. But it, yeah. it is the case. Um, but thank you, Brad, very much, and continued success with everything, and we will see you next year. Um, and happy holidays to you as well. And last but certainly not least, um, the person who critically failed, no, um, the person who succeeded, but but then succeeded in knocking out his guy. So there, there will be a back and forth situation going on. The, the rivalry continues. Um, Trent, always a lot of fun uh, to see the way that Tani goes through things. And I was also cracking up thinking about the the amount of scrubbing of like pans and stuff like that. They're just kind of like, I don't know, what do you want me to do with this plate? Like, how do I... This is sub hell kitchen. Like, how do I even do? Um, but uh, it was fun to watch you try to manage it regardless. How'd you feel about today? Where will the folks 
see you next, although I know the answer to that question, but... Yep. So, first of all, with regard to dragons and how they behave, um, I absolutely love this book, uh, The Sleeping Dragon by Joel Rosenberg. Mm. It's one of the fantasy novels that I come back to again and again and again and again and again because it's a bunch of it's about a bunch of college kids playing D&D who get <laughs> sucked into their D&D world and become their characters it's amazing I love it well it's not I mean it's amazing but it's not exactly nice um <laughs> and so, okay. yeah. hmm. uh where will people be seeing me next uh here next year no uh actually hang on so you said Wow, next year already. You can't say that this is like the 300th day of March and then in the next breath say, wow, it's already almost next year. No, well, this year has been because like we went from March to long. next year is my point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but March yes, you're is right. now three months away. You're, you're right. That's, 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 that's not okay. Point. That's actually <laughs> just oh almost March again. That's true. I know. Or still. Anyway, um, no, it'll be later on this what? evening it's after. All March? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All been. March, all the time. <laughs> Um, my, my, my high school band teacher wanted to write 31 marches called March 1st, March 2nd, March 3rd, all the way through. I don't know if you ever did it. Anyway, um, good names for marches. Anyway, so yeah, it'll be tonight, uh, this evening here, right back here on this channel after I get some sleep. Um... trying to think of the name of the story. I'm going back to humming. Hang on. Okay. I was like, what? <laughs> Christmas Carol. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't remember what it was called. Yes. Christmas um, Carol. <laughs> where, Sorry. Where, where I will be doing the voice of Christmas yet to come. Uh, yeah, you will be dot dot dot. We do have. Remember, I'm really looking forward to. I hope Ghost of Christmas Future. One of my one of my viewers who always shows up at that time and just says dot 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 in in chat, literally, and it's always hilarious. And I hope he does it again. <laughs> um, that they do it again. But um, always a pleasure to have Trent with us. We will see you again tonight. And I also I said this as well to some of my other campaigns, to all my other campaigns. But I want to say as well to this crew, um, all of us here share a common love of Tolkien um, and share a love of playing together. And I have really taken great joy and solace in a difficult year for everybody and so on in this um and so i really want to thank everybody for you know wonderful play uh, great storytelling from everybody and really great chemistry and a lot of good moving emotional moments um from this crew i expect more of that to come Erebor adventures is going to get just even more nutty uh in in the year 2021 but it's a great pleasure to be able to gm for this crew so thank you in addition to praising them all the time i do want to thank them for being uh, good friends and players both so thank you to trendane to brad to uh terry and to amal um everyone have a wonderful christmas festivus holiday kwanzaa hanukkah etc etc and uh, much love to everybody and, and that too that's right that's right much love <laughs> to everybody and chat can we get some love for the players as well thanks uh everybody and i will see you folks either tonight or next year <laughs> Everybody, take care. Bye. Bye for now. And uh, that is going to do it for us for today because I have got to move uh, real fast to get over to GOG. Um, I uh, was running a little bit behind. I know we were running behind doing this stuff, and I didn't want to cut it off because I thought this would be a good spot. I'm glad that we found a suitable place. But now I've got to head over to GOG and get that going. So. Uh, I am just going to quickly say thank you all for having followed this adventure as well. And I look forward to more of it coming in January with more adventures in Middle Earth. But right now, i got to rise up on out of here and get uh, going with um, uh, with uh, Pen and Pixels over on GOG. So thank you <coughs> for watching. Make sure that you follow the channel. Check out the YouTube at exclamation point arf tube, Discord exclamation point arf cord, Twitter exclamation point arf tweets, website arvanelleron.com, financially exclamation point arf shop for the merchandise area, exclamation point arf tray on for that Patreon right there thank you echo for the annual uh sub now i really appreciate that thank you for subscribing to the channel as well for everybody who has been doing that you can get those custom sub badges and emotes and all that good stuff and thank you as well to folks for supporting my icarus graphic novel exclamation point icarus tales and tomes from the forbidden library that's exclamation point library and um exclamation point uh gray shade ks is my gray shade kickstarter which is going to be
to be coming early February. More details of that to come very, very soon. Last but certainly not least, exclamation point BLM for Black Lives Matter. Again, please continue to follow the resources for that. And exclamation point help now, which is the suicide prevention uh, page of the World Health Organization, also important right now as well. I'm going to head over to GOG to do pen and pixels. Tonight, we will do the Orvocalist. Please remind me for to do the vote um, sometime during the Orvocalist stream tonight. Please, somebody remind me to do that um, because I have to do the vote for the Patreon Field Chat Chosen Game of the Month, but I can't do it now. So I'm going to have to do it uh, sometime this evening during our second cast. I'm heading over to do some Vaporum Lockdown on Pen and Pixels. Then I'll be back tonight at 8 p.m. right here for A Christmas Carol. But until then, thank you, everybody. Much love to all. And I will see all of you lovely folks very soon. Until then, everyone be good to each other. Have a good night.